Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday, December the 30th, 2022 is upon us. Whether you like it or not, the 90s get further and further away. It's no longer 10 years and it hasn't been 10 years in a while, so stop thinking it. Or continue to think it if it makes you feel happy, like it makes me feel happy. I could go back to the 90s. Mr. Black, if you go back to the 90s tomorrow, would you for a couple, like, have a week or two, experience the 90s again? Yeah. I'd no social like media. I I'm, might even a whole year in the 90s it wouldn't be that bad. It's true. I mean, how much can you really do in two weeks, you know? I, I feel like I would need a year of, a ni of 90s to really... <laughs> to really you know, get back into it. To get back into it. I'd be, I'd, I'd be dead. Which, which year in the 90s, specifically? Are you going probably, back to? I'm probably going like mid nineties, ninety four, ninety five. Hmm. Yeah, I That's think I think I think I'm somewhere around ninety seven, ninety eight. Personally, mm, late nineties. Ten years old. At that time. Mm. Oh, I thought I thought we meant we meant or just we, in in general. Yeah, oh, like, like ourselves, just, like ourselves to oh. go back. Oh, then yeah, yeah. It. Oh, like ninety three, ninety four. Yeah. Yes. Uh, otherwise, if we were if we were going back in age as well, then I'm going 97, 98. Yeah. Uh, great video game years, 97 and 98, uh, as well as you know just being on the cusp of of the internet before the internet became the plague that it is now, <laughs> just the cusp uh, of that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's been uh, quite a hiatus, 100 percent on me this hiatus. Normally we would only take one. Maybe two podcasts off at this time of year, depending on when the Thursdays fell or when the podcast days fell. But uh, but this time it wasn't for that reason. The reason was uh, M and I have bought a home. Boom! And uh, boom, out of nowhere. Was not expected at all. Um, so that happened. And that's why uh, <laughs> that's why we haven't had the podcasts. I kept thinking that uh, at least last week, I was almost positive I could. But then... It just literally didn't happen. We were waiting for, um, all of our stuff was like last minute. It was crazy. Uh, which of course is because, excuse me, we're closing during the holidays. And so banks and lawyers and all these, all these entities that are involved and, uh, you know, they've got their, uh, their vacation times and their limited operational hours, even when they're in the office and, and whatnot. And you're trying to do all of these things and coordinate buyer and seller side uh in the 11th hour uh and uh and so we ran it right up to the wire it was literally the last day of conditionals when shit was rolling through uh and uh but we we pulled it off and so uh this week we are going to um uh be signing going to the lawyers to sign the last of the of the papers hand in our our big fat check that says i'm broke dot jpeg Hand it over to the lawyer. <laughs> oh, you doing a, you doing how, uh, how much? Are you doing twenty percent down? No, God, no. But I'm still okay. broke. Okay, yeah. I mean, because twenty twenty percent. The you know we got we got the house for for uh, how much over asking? It was seventy five over asking. Yeah, which it's seems usually, to be the going rate. It's usually about about six to ten percent of the initial asking price over. Yeah. yeah. That's usually what you're looking at. So, so we, uh, <laughs> and the only reason we got it apparently was because, you know, we wrote the letter, which is like the, the deal sealer, uh, as it often ends up being, um, especially for us, because we knew, uh, like I technically knew the seller from when I was very young. And so I had to, I got to play all the, mm. the heart strings. That's it. Of course. Uh, I don't it. think my letter would have meant, meant shit if I didn't know the guy, <laughs> if I didn't know the guy, but it worked out in our favor this time, uh, and, uh, and locked it up. So, uh, yeah, so it has been obviously a very hectic, uh, few weeks once that process started, literally went like, it was one day I was standing at, uh, the, the, the back of the dining room upstairs and, and mom was on the computer doing something behind me. She's got the laptop set up at the dining room table. And I was looking outside, literally saying, like, you know, it's like, Em and I have been talking. We're probably not going to get into uh, buying a house for another year or two. Um, just trying to put, you know, the money away and, and waiting 
waiting for the opportunity to uh to get into a decent place because Marcel's friends have been buying houses left, right, center right now. Like, they're cranking out babies and buying houses. And <laughs> some of them got good deals, and some of them got fucking reamed on their houses. Uh, and so we were, we were a little, we were a little sketchy about it. And some of the houses nearby were going up new, semi-detached for, like, just the most ridiculous amount of money. And we were like, fuck this, we're just gonna wait a year or two, and, and we'll, when an opportunity arises. I, that comes out of my mouth, and mom's like, well, why don't you buy, you know, so-and-so's... Uh, place, because it's like super close to, uh, to mom and dad's place. And I was like, excuse me? They're selling their house? Of course, I never leave the fucking house, I'm just a dungeon troll, I'm literally in this, in this room 24 hours a day, other than taking M2 and from work. And so I never saw the sign go up on the front yard, when it went up. And she's like, yeah! And nobody on the street, uh, knew that it was going up at the time. It just, he just put that shit up. And not only that, he had moved out already. Like, the shit was, like, it was already done. I was like, all right, well. So I made some calls, and literally that same day, we went from, we're not gonna buy a house, to we're putting in offers in, like, in like a 24-hour period. And now here we are, we were successful. Uh, and now we're, we're gonna be super broke, because, uh, we, uh, Got the house, but now we're, of course, looking at, uh, renovation work, and renovation work right now is crazy expensive. The only thing saving us right now is that my father is capable of, of with my help, doing 90% Well, at least lumber isn't where it was, you know, a year ago, so, I mean, yeah, you got that that's true, that, that came down. Although we don't have a lot of lumber to buy, like, at most for us, the lumber that we gotta buy will be, like, uh, six two-by-fours, and, but the thing that would really hurt is... Upstairs, we do have- there is subfloor in place already underneath the click, but, um, we haven't decided if we're going to- because we have a unit downstairs, right? So we haven't decided if we're going to, uh, going to do a second subfloor with green glue underneath the stop footfalls going into the bottom unit, and voices coming up from the bottom unit, and vice versa, or if we're going to double jip rock the ceiling downstairs, Yep. In the reverse to uh, to accomplish it, and we're just gonna uh, basically it's gonna come down to pricing out to see bruh, if I'm gonna be honest. What does it? You should do both. <laughs> that's not I, that's bruh. literally not going to happen. What we are gonna do probably is double jip rock and then cork underlay on the floor upstairs because I literally cannot afford green glue. If you do if you do as as like like recommended. Uh, would be like three grand worth of green glue. That's not even including the subfloor and the double jip rock. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have kids and you have people downstairs or they have kids or anything like that, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> you're, only... you'll be, you'll be going, you'll be going, I fucking wish I just fucking, I just spent that money before we told, when we had the chance to do it, when the place was vacant and it was empty. <laughs> I mean, I fucking wish we just did it. And I'm telling you, bro, you should break your back to do it now while it's empty, it's vacant, and you never know. In a year, two years, three years, you have a little one and you're renting out, you're going to be like, you know, you're going to be like, fuck me. Yeah, I'm just I, I'm just I, I know. I, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. But. Yeah, I know. I've, I'm the. You can't, you can't get blood from a stone, Mr. Black. You can't simply just fabricate funds, uh, to do that stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, uh, about that. We haven't decided which one of those two ways. It's probably going to be the basement up instead of the other way down, because we can, we can cork underlay the, the floor upstairs to do most of that work, um, uh, upstairs, but... Yeah, anyway, we've got a lot of renovation work to do. Thankfully, like I said, Dad's, Dad and I are going to be able to do like 90% of that work uh, with a uh, few exceptions. Which saves us bajillions of dollars right now in fucking labor. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, we, I've just been in the last week or so, week, 10 days, I've been heavily going over all of our... Um, you know, the, all of the renovation stuff. So whether it's kitchen cabinets, whether it's flooring, whether it's, uh, um, all the stuff that needs to be done in the bathroom, all that stuff is being sorted out right now. What we can salvage, reglazing tubs versus new tubs, uh, tile backsplashes versus just doing, uh, vinyl, uh, vinyl surrounds, things of that nature, trying to stretch our dollars because 
We're not swimming in money, so we gotta- we actually have to be picky choosy about, uh, about where we put the funds. Thankfully, the unit downstairs that will be rented doesn't have a lot of work that needs to be done to get it to a rentable state. Very little needs to be done down there, so... That was like the one major bonus, but of course for M, and upstairs was way more heavily used. Uh, you know, she- she doesn't need to be- she doesn't want to be bougie, but she also- also, she said, right now, I wouldn't take a shower in that bathroom if I had my shoes on, so I said, <laughs> alright. <laughs> okay? Hey, bathroom and kitchen, make it- make, you know, put your money in there. That's where all the money is going, so... Put your money. So, that's where we're at. So anyway, very exciting times around here. Uh, you know, uh, as anyone would know, first-time homeowners, exciting and stressful, uh, but uh, exciting all the same, so we're in the midst of that. Uh, and I'm hoping, once this thing at the end of the week is done, and I'm just down to, like, prep, you know, beforehand, streaming and stuff is gonna be a gong show for, like, two months. Like, I'm gonna be, like, squeezing oh, yeah, in you're, yeah, yeah, you're just, like, be... two hours here and there, yeah, just whatever the fuck done. I can do. Cause I still gotta take M2 and from work and manage all that shit while we're doing the fucking yeah, You're gonna the be renovations. for at least two months. So... Long days ahead, but anyway, that's it. Anyway, that's my full. That's my full holiday update. Uh, ho ho ho! Merry Christmas and all that. Uh, what about you, Mister Black? How was your weeks? Uh, they were pretty fucking bad. Um, that's not good. Yeah, I mean, I had a good. <laughs> I had a good. I had a good Christmas. So I mean, okay. I had, I, I had a good right. holidays, but I I've had you know the last podcast we talked. I was having some stomach issues. It continued. Uh, so you know, I'm actually feeling not bad today. I've got a fucking headache right now but um because i haven't been drinking enough water but uh there you go. <laughs> uh yeah i just been fucking hurting uh hurting bad so yeah drop like 10 or 11 pounds in a in like three weeks barely been able to eat now ah. I'm, now i'm finally taking like full shits which is great <laughs> i'm eating i'm eating some more which is good so i'm i think i'm on the mend um i gotta get some more tests done next week um, doctors don't think it's anything, you know, serious or anything like that. Um, I think, I think it was just like, there was a three week period where I was eating so bad and just like, I mean, really bad, like really, really bad. And, um, you know, I was the heaviest I ever was. I was like at 192 pounds. So oh. like now, now I'm back down to 182. So, you know, which is like more of a, my regular walking around comfortable <laughs> yeah. weight. So I think my body was just like. Bro, stop the madness. There's just don't don't do this anymore. Um, at least that's what I'm hoping. But I'm feeling a little bit better now, and I have been for the last week. Um, still not a hundred percent. Still pretty scared to go and you know grab a burger. I haven't had a hamburger in like six seven weeks. Um, just scared to really do much. Scared to eat lots of yogurt, anything like that. Man, I'm just like I'm on edge. I was getting subs from Subway with no cheese. I'm like, man, like. Every everything was scaring me. So, uh, but yeah, no, it was pretty rough. Pretty rough couple of weeks. I took like five days off at one point because I was just dying. Um, so yeah, it was a it was actually a really fucking shitty December. That's unfortunate. It was a horrible December, and like, there's nothing worse than stomach issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, the, having having had you, them for a long time, and I know you know what it's all about. Like, I'm with you. It's uncomfortable. I was bloated. I was salty. Like, I had the fucking <laughs> yeah. shits, I was like, I was just, it was awful, it was just fucking awful, and 24-7, this isn't like, you know, two hours no. a day, I'm feeling good, it's just there all the time, Yes. no matter what, and I'm like, and man, I think I'm dying. Like, the what shittiest part about it, too, is that when they're, if they're trying to figure out, for example, if you have, like, a sensitivity to something, or, or whatever, is that it's not like they can say, all right, well, take this out of your diet for the next five days. It's take this out of your diet for the next six weeks. That's and then it, we'll man. see what, and then we see what happens. And you're That's like, it. oh. Yep. And if, so if it's not, we're just going to try something else for another six weeks? And like, yes. yes. Yes, we are. And that's okay. pretty much what I've been doing. I had to take a journal of like what I was eating, when I yeah. was eating it. Uh, yeah, so it's, it was rough. Last week though, two thumbs up. I'm feeling like there you go. 65%. 70 on some days today i actually feel like 80 percent. so today has been fucking amazing it does sound like you've probably just od'd on shit that your body is not happy with like if were you cramming dairy down your fucking Bro, face I was like crazy everything down there man i was eating donairs <laughs> like three four times a week i was oh eating fucking takeout <laughs> i was eating shit tons of cheese and pepperoni before bed like every oh, night no. like we were oh, just on we were it. just on one bro we kale and i were both on one 
Uh, so, <laughs> you know, now, now we're not on one at all. So you're, oh, off, and my, you're off one. And then my freezer broke in the middle of all of it. So, you know, right. uh, I have to pretty much order a new freezer, which, you know, uh, is gonna, is gonna cost God only knows. Um, so is that the one at the bottom of your fridge? No. Or is that like a chest freezer? Fridge. No, no. My, remember my, my fridge, like one side is fridge. Other side is freezer. The big yeah 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 oh no sorry I thought I thought yours was like at a bottom drawer to it nah that's bro, a, that's a like, that's like a water bottle drawer or something nah this is the whole fucking yeah, yeah, you yeah. know big ass fucking fridge yeah um so you know there yeah so anyway that thing's fucked I had another guy come here yesterday I've been getting fucking how wide is that fridge fucking forty two inches it's bigger I think it's fifty something so you've got a seven thousand dollar fridge that you got to order. <laughs> might be it might it might actually be more it might uh, actually be, be more than that <laughs> might actually be more and the worst part about it is is like no place got anything because of covid no so no. like we had to buy this little tiny shitty freezer and we're gonna have to order this fridge and if we order the fridge it's discontinued so i have to order a new fridge and freezer so like it's guaranteed uh. gonna be eight nine grand so and it's and it's probably gonna take a minimal a year to like order this and get this. Oh so we're going to have to buy us another deep freezer, put it in the garage, use that uh, and then order it. I know first world problems. I mean, you but know, it is I would is, straight but. up be ordering a 36 inch fridge and boxing in the fucking cabinets oh, and fuck saying, that, yeet that shit into the yeah. sun. Nah, oh, fuck it, man. What can you do? <laughs> a year for a 10 K fridge. I'd be like, nah, I'm checking out of this shit. Yeah. I'm living, I'm living on, on fucking micro food. Yeah, it is what it is, man. You know, it is what it Fuck. is. So my December is pretty dog shit. Good holidays. <laughs> Spend some time with family. My sister's got the COVID. Um, uh -oh. she's got the Omicron stuff, so she's fine. She just had yeah. like some some cold symptoms, so she wasn't near the family or anything. For Was she holidays. two plus boost or just two? No, she is. She's not vaccinated at all. Oh, so she she went she zero. She had, well, she had COVID before. Oh, so okay. She, had, she got COVID when she was in Vancouver. Right. Um. So you know she's got the antibodies and stuff. So she so just rode the wave. She, she was just like, I, I'm just not gonna bother getting it. And so she got COVID again, and she's not. You know, it's she's everyone's not. Like, getting, everyone's getting. Yeah, everyone's getting on. It doesn't matter if you boost or not. It's a fucking cold, man. It's it's, it's, it's whether it's whether it's whether or not you're severely fucked or not severely fucked is basically all it is at this point. Because yeah, that well, thing is yeah. that thing is spreading more than the common cold. That's how high the R value is on that bitch. It's a, uh, in my opinion. I don't want this to turn into COVID talk. But no, I no, we don't need. I to actually know. think it's going to sound crazy. I actually think it's a good thing that because like. If well, you're gonna science catch, if you're believes gonna catch, it is. Yeah, it, it, it's it's what science believes. Yes. If, if you're gonna catch COVID, getting this version of COVID is the best it's version to get. Obviously, and then, yes. Yeah, and then you get the antibodies, and you know maybe just maybe the government will start realizing that like we can't stay like this for yeah. ten years, and yeah. then you know everybody's gonna get COVID. Uh, you know, and then we just move on. This, I mean, Delta was like severely bad. So like, you know, ain't nobody Delta wanted to get was Delta. Rough. That yeah. shit'll fuck you up. But yeah. you know, or everybody's COVID rates are going crazy, but hospitalizations are, you know, it is. Yeah, it's it been going. It's been going down. It's really yeah. like, and what we're still waiting and hoping for is that. You know, because everyone's basically going to be exposed to it. It's just a matter of time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's. Even though the the severity because of a, a million things. One, it's apparently like I think it's like they said ten percent less severe than Delta. It's everyone has either been exposed to COVID at this point or have vaccines in most countries, and so the severity has been taken way out the fucking sales. And it also sits higher in your respiratory tract, which also helps uh, in certain cases. But it's. So many people could get it all at the same time in such a short window because the the period is only like two days before you get symptomatic now instead of like ten. Yeah, that they were yeah. like, "Fuck, the hospital could still get if everyone got it simultaneously." But thankfully, so far, we're all right. We're good, and the hospital stays are shorter now. So if you go into the hospital, they're only like two or three days instead of the fucking lengthy ones. So yeah, so bro, far, I so good. I borderline just want to go out there and just catch the COVID, man. I just like just get it over with, man. <laughs> just come and just come hit me. Just come hit me with it. Let me get these antibodies and just There's move still on. the occasional shitty breakthrough. So, I mean, it's like, if you get it, it's, that's not the end of the world. But maybe don't, like, force yourself out there. I ain't going to run it. out there. You know, I'm still masking up. I'm still doing all this fucking shit that, you know, you have to do right now. I'm still following all the things. I'm not, like, I'm not, like, going a bit. Like, we didn't go to my, my parents, my mom's, because they were having a Christmas party. We didn't even go because we were like, ah, it's not really worth it. Don't know if I want to catch the COVID. 
uh during the holidays probably not a good idea so we just we just did our thing at home so it was like a weird that we didn't get to do our normal tradition yeah, but yeah. uh you know even last year we went to my mom's but since like spreading is so crazy right now i was like nah nah I yeah. gotta make the I gotta make the decision, man. We staying at we staying at home this Christmas. We, so. Yeah, we staggered we staggered ours out. Like we just had like two people at a time, and everyone did yeah. a rapid test before showing up and shit. Especially because yeah. like mom and dad are boosted, but Nan hasn't gotten anything yet. Yeah, uh, because she's stuck at home, and they don't treat the at home elderly the same as they do in a retirement home or not retirement home, but you know what I mean, extended care facility. Um, and we still don't know when she's gonna get. <laughs> We still don't know what she's gonna like. We haven't contacted, oh, so we were we were a little bit guarded with it. But uh, but otherwise, yeah. So that's been so far so good. We'll hope that continues on. But shall we talk about some games, Mr. Black? I mean, if we have to. It's, there's it's, technically speaking, this is supposed to be at least in portion. Nobody, listen, man. You know what we need to do? We, you know, you and I. What we need to do is we need to listen. It's 2022. It's supposed to be 2022 in two days. We need we need we need to have an executive meeting, all right? I need to come over and help I need to come over and help you out with your little house things uh, one of these weeks. And we gotta sit down, we gotta talk about the future of Technical Alpha Podcast. I've been I've been doing some research, man. I've been doing some research. And you've been given too much downtime. You took five days off and man, now you're doing research. That's it, man. Listen, the research is this. The research is this, and the, the comment section can let me know. The chat can let me know on the YouTubes, man. They don't give a fuck about the gaming news, man. They don't care. They don't give a fuck. And I think I think what it is is uh, I think if there's the gaming news, it needs to be like a 30 minute segment. You know, we need to just go into some other shit because 99 uh, percent of the people that's probably too high. 89 percent of the people they uh, they don't give, they don't give a fuck. You know what they care about? They care about Adam buying his new house. They care Great. about uh, Jeff's fridge getting fucked up. Great. And they care about tech support. Well, let's keep this short then, shall we? Let's do it. We can do that. There wasn't, you know, we can we can definitely keep it uh, keep it truncated. Uh, so, geez, it's been so long since we did the podcast, but thankfully it's the holidays, so like it, we've had news, but obviously it's been spread out uh, pretty thin over the last few weeks. Uh, the Game Awards happened. We watched that live, um, or I watched it uh, that live, and uh, and kind of went through uh, the motions there. Uh, it's been more and more, uh, basically advertisements with occasional awards. Which, in fairness to Jeff Keighley, is about the only way that you can fund one of these fucking award uh, shows. It's like, because, <laughs> for the same reasons, like, you're not gonna get money unless you're, you're, you're peddling somebody's shit. So, there's been lots of, uh, of, uh, of reveals and stuff, which has been nice, but also more advertisements than we like to see. Regardless, we got some of the lists here. We'll hit the highlights. Game of the Year was a big uh, a big upset, really. It Takes Two, that indie game, uh, got very, very highly rated. Everyone enjoyed it, said it was a very good game. Uh, took Game of the Year. So it was an indie title that indeed actually took the dub over top of Deathloop, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and & Clank, uh, and Resident Evil Village. Uh, and if you remember, I don't know if you remember uh, from the, the guy... Uh, in previous, he was on stage in previous Game Awards. He's the guy that uh, that just uh, said fuck the Oscars or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's that guy in his game studio that does It Takes Two. So he had his, his secondary moment in the in the in the sun now, and of course now he's got he's got a little baby now. So he's like dad energy on stage. It was adorable. Uh, it was great. Very happy to game see. Game of the year. Game of the year. It's actually I, I'm not I like I. I could make an I could make a case for on this list of the games that they actually made it. I could make a case for Ratchet and Clank, Psychonauts 2, and It Takes Two. I can't see Deathloop, Metroid Dread, or Resident Evil. Resident Evil Village being on that list hurts my fucking soul. Yeah, that's a technicality, I think. I there. think that's basically a technicality. Um Do I do would I have given it to It Takes Two? Probably not, but I also think that it still totally deserves to be on the game of the year list, like 100%. Uh, pretty much everyone, critic or player alike, loved it, uh, and it's still uh, highly recommended, and so uh, I can right. see why. Uh, other highlights there, best independent game. Uh, went to Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. That was that Disney-looking, Pixar-looking uh, Sony game. Uh, and Kenna actually took a, a couple of awards, I think. It was that and, and something else. Uh, best mobile game went to Genshin Impact. Big fucking surprise there. Um, 
I'm trying to see what other highlights would make sense to talk about here. Uh, I like this category now, innovation in accessibility, because games are getting more and more accessible for people with disabilities and whatnot, so they have a new category uh, that allows uh, the, these games to get uh, you know, awarded for, uh, for making the effort. Far Cry 6, Forza Horizon 5, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratchet and Clank, and, uh, Veil Shadow of the Crown were the nominees, and Forza took that. Of course, it's kind of hard to compete with fucking having, like, overlaid sign language people in your games. A hell of a friggin', uh, jump forward. Uh, Best Art Direction went to Deathloop. Uh, best multiplayer also went to It Takes Two. I think that also took, uh, Family Game. Fun fact, every other game in the Family Game category was Nintendo. Oh. It Takes Two was the only non-Nintendo game <laughs> in the Family category, uh, and It Takes Two took the prize. Best esports game went to League of Legends for, like, the 90th fucking year. Uh, but again, I mean, like, how are you supposed to... I mean, rightfully so. I mean, what, <laughs> what other esport games... It's that and Dota and CSGO is like the three on that list that just... Call of Duty somehow ended up on there, and Call of Duty is in shambles yeah, in no, their eSport league right now. Yeah, that ain't shambles. Uh, and then the best eSport event went to uh, Worlds to the uh, for this year, 2021. And the last uh, but not least, Dream was the content creator of the year over top of Foosley. Uh, Gals, uh, Ibai, and The Greg, or The Grefk, I don't know, I don't, I know none of these, these are definitely, I know, Fu I shouldn't say that, I know Foosley, um, that's it, all these others are all the Zoomer, Zoomer-powered content creators that I'm too old to know, I'm too old to know these people, uh, so that was kind of like the highlights of the awards, uh, only a handful of those actually got shown off at the awards ceremony. The rest of them were just posted online. Uh, more specifically to this show was all the reveals that they did, and we can go over some of the highlights uh, there for the game reveals that we saw, because they did have some exclusives. Um, the Expanse, which is a relatively popular series, I believe now sitting on Amazon Prime, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is getting a game done by Telltale, so similar to when they did The Walking Dead uh, kind of vi graphic or visual interactive novel type experience. They're doing that with The Expanse, uh, called, uh, what is it called? The Expanse Babylon... Oh no, sorry, that's, <laughs> that's the next game. Uh, it's just called The Expanse. That's it. And it looked pretty good. Uh, and you know what? They did a really good job with The Walking Dead games. I don't know if you ever played those back in the day. Uh, the Telltale I ones. Yeah. yeah. They did a good job with those, so I bet you The Expanse is uh, you're probably gonna be pretty good. There's a lot of material to work with, with The Expanse. Uh, we saw Babylon's Fall, I Fell Asleep. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, uh, everyone's getting very excited, that's, I think, is that, that's either next month or February, I can't remember which one now, but the Monster Hunter community is, of, uh, of course, very, uh, excited about the next, uh, the next installment there for, uh, Sunbreak, the expansion, it's coming to PC as well, I think that marks the same time, roughly, uh, in a, in a similar window. Uh, Evil West, uh, get a premiere, uh, trailer there, and, um, uh, not worth talking about, really. Have a Nice Death was kind of adorable, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, that's a nice little uh, indie-looking title. Um, kind of like an Ori in the Blind Forest type deal. Something similar to that, give or take. Uh, then we saw Atlas announced Persona 4 Arena Ultimax getting ported uh, to the PS4, PC, and Switch. Which, uh, yeah, everyone got very excited because the the the... The, uh, the teaser that they said, the person on stage said, is you'll never see it coming, which is, like, part of the song from Persona 4. I said it on the stream, I was like, it's Persona 4. Persona 4 flashes up on screen, and everyone starts going crazy, because everyone wants Persona 4 on the Switch. And then, nope, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax instead. Get fucked. Atlas continuing to make the weirdest fucking decisions about which games they port and when. Then we got a really lengthy demo from Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Uh, that will be the one that, like, two years ago, I think, at E3, if you remember what that game looked like, it was the one that had, like, the, uh, the girl with the facial expressions of a very, like, uh, the tribal, uh, tribal type deal. Yeah. Uh, we saw more of that. Looked visually incredible, uh, and because they were showing, like, some actual gameplay to it. Of course, it is more of a closer to, a um, 
you know, uh, time button press kind of a situation. You're not, like, it's not... You're not real-time action combat all the time, is what I'm trying to say, so they can dump a lot of visual fidelity in, and it looks visually quite impressive. Uh, so they showed some, uh, some of that off. Uh, Star Wars Eclipse! Uh, that's a Quantic Dream deal. Which, everyone got excited because it was Star Wars, and then Quantic Dream showed up, and everyone was like, oh. So that was how that went down. Uh, Wonder Woman's getting a game, Mr. Black. Great. Surprised it took this long, honestly. But here we are, Wonder Woman. Alan Wake 2, there's, there's the one! Did you watch that trailer? I'm, I did. You, there you go. What did you think of that trailer? How are you feeling about Alan Wake 2? I mean, I'm feeling good about Alan Wake 2. It's like the the game that I've been that I mentioned quite frequently over the years when we talk about like games we wish had a sequel or yeah. games that, you know. Um I mean the trailers it's just more, you know. We have to wait for some gameplay. Yeah, it's computer generated, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, cutscenes which, you know, are pretty. It's the PS5. I mean, art you know, style was looking good though. Yeah, it was looking it was, it was looking, looking good. good. Um, how do you feel about them saying that they're going towards a a more uh, true horror, uh, survival, like survival horror, horror instead yeah. of doing the the thriller that they did before? How are you feeling about that move? I think it's I think it's a fine move. I mean, I kind of felt it to be more of a survival horror the first game anyway. I mean, as long as they keep the story elements to it and it's story driven, then I'm down. You know, it's. Uh, I guess it's probably going to play like Silent Hill and Resident Evil. I literally said on uh, on stream, I said I, uh, when they said they're doing like more survival horror, and I saw the trailer, I said out I said out loud, these guys are doing Silent Hill because Konami won't do it. Yeah, and uh, you know Resident and, Evil's so big, you know it's like uh, if you can create uh, some competition because there's no real competition for Resident Evil uh, in that sense, like as as like a, a horror survival type game, then I think it can do well. I mean, we'll see. Just don't do multiplayer bullshit. Don't fucking, <laughs> they you know. They won't, have, they won't have multiplayer. Yeah, <laughs> like, just make a good story and make a good game, and, you know, we'll see what they can do. Uh, we also got Sonic the Hedgehog 2's official trailer. We heard uh, Mr. Idris Elba dropping his Knuckles uh, impersonation. Uh, and uh, you know what? It looked pretty damn good. You know, I, I, I still, I love the arc of the Sonic movies thus far. Uh, the whole, it was going to be a dumpster fire, then it turned out to be not so bad, and now we've got, like, this full-blown, we're bringing in some bigger names, and now it's just looking properly like it's going to be, uh, quite a good sequel. Uh, so that was nice to see in that trailer. Uh, we got some more Horizon Forbidden West gameplay. Uh, breaking news, it still looks really good. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, uh, PC release date trailer. So we get a release date for, uh, for that. It's coming out, um, came out, what? Two weeks ago. It's been how long we've done this podcast since. It's the 16th that bitch came out. I thought it was in January or some shit. Uh, if I remember correctly, the PC port is not so hot. Uh, which would be basically par for the course for Final Fantasy PC ports, so that wouldn't be surprising to me if that was the case. Uh, Destiny 2, the Witch Queen, uh, Queen trailer dropped. If you're big on Destiny and still like getting reamed by, uh, by Bungie, then, uh, you get excited about that. Then Guillermo del Toro came on screen, Mr. Black. <laughs> and he name-dropped some people, and then he name-dropped Silent Hill. And my people, I mean, he name dropped, like he was name dropping, like, so he's Silent Hill, and then the creator of Silent Hill, and the guy that did the music for Silent Hill, and everyone in the audience, and me at home, are literally about to pass out. It's like, is this finally happening? Holy shit! And then they dump into a trailer, and as it turns out, everyone involved in that is doing not Silent Hill, and I immediately fucking turned my brain off and got angry about it. Like, everything. Guillermo del Toro, who was with Kojima trying to work on, like, the next Silent Hill. And then you had the Silent Hill creator and the, the Silent Hill fucking uh, music guy. And I was just like, oh, please, this is it. This is our moment in the sun. And then, no, we, instead we got Splitterhead. And I gotta be honest, at least from the trailer, I'm passing hard on that. Passing the rock hard on Splitterhead. Uh, but that might just be because I'm salty that they gave me all of that and then blue balls me the fuck at the end. 
Uh, it was it was bad enough that Guillermo, like, a couple days later had to come out and say, Guys, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to actually blue balls you. I was actually just trying to, trying to jab Konami for not making a Silent Hill game. I'm like, alright, Guillermo. Go back to making crazy movies. Uh, Nightingale was a new game from, uh, former Bioware boss, uh, Aaron Flynn. And it's a survival crafting game, uh, that looked I. What do you got? What do you? What do you? A guy in the chat said Jeff's jacket's making him look like he's got saggy titties. <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sakes, my god! Uh, I already lost the weight, man. I already lost the weight. Oh, uh, bro, I'm I'm fucking. I'm so I'm a fucking. I'm I am levels of out of shape. My dad came out the workout room earlier today. I was sitting on the couch just getting the podcast ready. Dan boy comes out. He's got a muscle shirt on. He's 70 years old. His arms are the size of my torso. And because he had just like did, he's just doing like his, his exercise where lifting weights came out. And I was like, God damn it. I'm just looking at myself on the couch. Yep. And I'm just yep. like this amorphous, skinny, fat blob. And yep. dad, 70 years old, walks out the, out the door just jacked out of his mind. Bro, <laughs> I, was like, the I fuck? had the exact same experience, man. So fucking. <laughs> Christmas, uh, uh, it was, was it cr Christmas, Christmas Eve? Dad came over and I was like, yo, dad, man, we got the hot tub, man. Why don't you come in? He's like, I ain't got no shorts. I said, I got, I got shorts for you. So, all right. Dad goes out, gets, I'm, I'm in the hot tub. He comes down. This motherfucker is ripped, jacked, <laughs> fucking, he comes in here. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the guy like, for one, I'm impressed, but for two, like, it made me look at myself, and Just I'm like, sad. dude, how is this almost 60-year-old man <laughs> literally in, at minimal, five times better shape than me? <laughs> like, it's absolutely insane. He's got no gut. He's got his fucking arms the size of my head. His fucking legs are like tree trunks. You guys are brick shit house. I'm like, bro. It's the How? difference between exercise and not exercising, Mr. Black. Seriously, and he's in the gym <laughs> all the fucking time, and I'm like, my god, man. So yeah, the dads are out here just making us look fucking... Looking terrible, bud. Looking awful. Fucking like, brutal. I'm gonna be over there doing renovation work, dad's gonna have all this energy, I'm gonna be gassed in the first hour. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're gonna be done. I'm, I'm gonna you're be done. You're gonna be like, bro, done. hey, I need dad. A time out. We're gonna take a tea here. <laughs> time out. Uh, we got some more from that Gollum game, uh, and that looked whatever. Uh, Cuphead, uh, has, uh, some sort of, oh yeah, their, their last DLC for Cuphead is coming out June 30th of, uh, next year. Sonic Frontiers! Mr. Black, Sonic is going open world. Did you see this? No, I didn't see <laughs> They're it. going open world. They did their Breath of the Wild moment. All right. And you know what? They've already cool. tried everything else and failed, sure. so why sure. not fucking, why, why not, not, right? Why not? Just Go for it, Sonic. Fucking Go do it. it. This is your chance. Uh, we had 50 Shades of Warhammer games, so if you're big on Warhammer, you got uh, more than a couple to, uh, to, uh, to tide you over there. Forspoken got some more gameplay. It still looks really mediocre, and I'm not a big fan of the... Of the writing, uh, and the constant fucking chatter from the main character, and also it looks like it runs at about 5 FPS on the PS5, that's not a good look. Uh, Saints Row still looks like doo-doo, in case you were wondering. Fall Guys exists. Dune Spice Wars! The Dune game coming out, it's gonna be a 4X, I believe. Uh, PC RTS. Uh, and so that could only go one of two ways, but hopefully it's the right way. Uh, and then other than that, you can see how many reveals there were versus rewards. You can start to see why this was just more like a, a mini E3, uh, than anything else. Man. Oh, Halo's getting a TV show. We saw a trailer for that. Did you see the trailer for I that? Did. Yeah. You know what? Didn't look completely awful. We didn't see a lot, but for the five seconds we saw... It gave me 0.1% hope that it's not going to be terrible. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but we will see. And then, uh, probably the best reveal, and it wasn't for the movie, it was the Matrix Awakens and Unreal Engine 5 experience. Oh, I downloaded the demo. The tell me you watched the Matrix. Not yet, no. Not yet, no. But we can still talk about it. 
we'll just we'll just talk around. I know you want to, and you already have on your stream, but we'll we'll talk around whatever there is to talk around and and get to that for sure. Because I know people have been waiting, dying for that. Um, uh, the demo though for this, so this is really an Unreal Five demo, right? So I downloaded on the PS Five. I played it. Uh, it's definitely a major step up from current graphical standards. I would say that's a solid like thirty percent to forty percent leap in visual fidelity. I immediately broke it because that's what I do with those games. I just break them when I find a way. I get outside the map uh, and uh, and had some fun out there. But you know what? It did. It looked really good. It was great. Uh, great visuals for uh, for the Unreal Engine Five. And uh, while Obviously, there's some performancey things here and there, you know, for what it was. It was uh, it was very interesting and a little bit of a glimpse at what Unreal uh, Engine Five is uh, is capable of. And so that was that was a fun little little thing. Uh, and that was it for the uh, for the the game awards. Doctor Disrespect has teamed up with Robert Four Zero Two Bowling and Quinn DeHoyo to create a new game development company, Mr. Black, called Midnight Society, and are actively recruiting now and plan to put a large emphasis on community involvement with development. It's time to put on your, your, your Miss Cleo hat, Mr. Black. The first game, probably four, three, four years from now, that comes out of Midnight Society. Is it a hit? Or is it a miss? Uh, Dr. Disrespect back. I think it's, I think it's a miss. Okay, I, I I think it's I think it's a miss. I mean, the Midnight Society. I haven't heard that name since. Uh, are you afraid of the dark? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, when I read it, I was like, "Are you sure you want to name yeah. your video game company that?" But all right, yeah. Um, listen, man, I'm rooting for Doctor Disrespect. I like him. Uh, I like him. Uh, I I hope I hope it's a big success. Um, he's he's had some experience with this stuff before. Uh, from from what I've heard, so yeah, he was like, a level designer in uh, yeah. in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, I think so. Yeah, so I mean, the guy isn't like incompetent by any means. He's a smart dude. He's a smart a smart business guy. He understands the game. He's got a lot of people behind him, content creator wise. That'll push this for sure. Um, I just don't. You know what? I'm going to change my opinion. <laughs> okay. I think if he I think if he does it right and he doesn't do too much community driven input just enough and he just goes with his vision and his team's vision and does it and then gets input and then kind of tweaks, but if he gets if he's got all of his friends and stuff kind of it becomes a, I think it'll become a convoluted fuck show. But I think if he stays true, I think I think it can succeed. I think all of the odds are against him, but all the odds were against him in his streaming career and everything else. So who am I to say that he can't do it? So I'm changing my opinion. I'm rooting for him. I'll play his game. I'll support it, whether it's bad or good. I'll buy it. I'll 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 do my part. I'll show it to my community. But all of it's, it, it's back's going to be against the wall, man. Every publication, all this stuff, man, it's going to be a lot of people out there. They're going to be like, hey, you can't do this. You can't. And they're going to be looking for every little thing. So he's he, his back is against the wall. But I think if there's somebody that can do it, I think Guy gets it done. Man, the amount of scrutiny this game is going to be under because he's the one frontlining it is going to be it. unimaginable, right? Like, everyone's going to be fine-tooth combing the shit. Because, in character or not, he basically just talks shit about the games that he plays all the fucking time, right? And, and what I would try to think of was, like, what kind of game is he going to make? Because there are very few aspects of any of the games I've seen him play where he praises them. Like, he'll praise them, like, occasionally, but, but... I don't even know what it's going to... What, what the game is going to look like at this point. I... Uh, <laughs> And, and like you, I'm a little skeptical about the community involvement. I think that having community feedback and open channels is something that more developers have been doing more recently and is certainly um, 
you know, it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you do get better and more frequent feedback, and on the other hand, you open yourself up to, you know, the rigors of a bunch of, of sweaty netbeard fox that are likely just going to send you death threats instead of any any useful information about your game. So, man, I don't know. I say there's... I, I feel like this is a coin flip for me. Honestly, I think this is, this is a 50-50 shot entirely based on who he can recruit. Because right now, the team is three guys that have very limited experience amongst them in actually creating a video game. Um, they need a lot more. They need, they need like three other big names before I go, okay, now this has got, now this has got some legs. Now you can actually, you can convert this into something. But the fact that we've got the list of names that we do right now, it's not inspiring a hell of a lot of confidence. So I think this is a coin flip. It's a cop out. If I had to push it so it wasn't a coin flip, I'd say it's a 60-40 split between failure and success. I think there's a greater chance this fails and succeeds, but I don't think, but I don't think it's as large of a gap as some people might imagine, because for the reasons you mentioned as well, uh, he has been involved in video game development before. He at least has a semblance of an idea of what it takes to actually create a video game, at least from a level design perspective and be the involved in that and know what that kind of environment is like. Uh, and... Uh, and he's played enough games and he, and he's, I think, I think some of it is he's got a bit of an idea that because of how his audience has reacted to the games that he's been playing and whatnot, that he has an idea of what people want in a game. And I think the scariest thing about making video games is that so many times developers think that they know what everyone wants, they put it out and nobody gives a fuck about your yeah. game. And then the stuff that you wouldn't think in a million years is going to take off, yeah, takes off. So I, I say it's a 60-40 failure success rate split, and we'll definitely keep tabs on the Midnight Society burning the, uh, the midnight oil, trying to make their first game. Uh, and, uh, and I don't know what it's going to be. Like, is it a BR? Is it just multiplayer? Is it an arena shooter? Or is it BR? I will find out. <laughs> and that will also determine the, the likelihood of success. So yes. we'll, see. we'll see, you know, what they announce. Absolutely. Uh, NFTs are trying to break into the gaming space all over, Mr. Black. Ubisoft is introducing them in games, uh, though the traction hasn't been particularly good so far. The CEO of Ubisoft, uh, Yves Gamow, compared the backlash that they received so far uh, after announcing this to microtransactions and loot boxes and said that NFTs are just the beginning. So he is all in on this shit. Blockchain and NFT related shit for Ubisoft games. Uh, seems to be a major thrust for the company coming from the head down. Stalker 2 tried to say the same thing, uh, but they are not a giant publisher. They are a single and relatively small company uh, putting out a relatively niche game, albeit one that's liked by a fair number of people, said they were going to do NFT integration into Stalker 2. But unfortunately, the blowback was so swift and huge that they literally, I think it was within like a fucking half hour, maybe two hours at best, immediately backtracked and said, okay, fine, we're not going to put NFTs in the game. So that turned around pretty quick. Uh, and finally, in news that shocks absolutely nobody, Peter Molyneux, the man, the myth, the legend, the go out on stage and promise you everything and deliver you nothing, has come out to say that he is making a blockchain-specific game coming out in 2022. NFTs, blockchain, he dropped all the buzzwords, Mr. Black. Peter Molyneux is in it. He knows. He's hit with it, Mr. Peter Molyneux. And so he's going to make make something for the kids. Right. <laughs> At least it's not Fable with NFTs. We got we got that far. At least he's out of, he's out of the Fable space. Left that up to somebody else. Uh, Ubisoft, at the back of getting slapped around for the NFT upstart, announced that a Splinter Cell remake is in development at Ubisoft Toronto and will be redone in the developer's more recent Snowdrop engine. So Sam Fisher is finally getting something, although as excited as I might be about seeing a remake of that, I would have rather them just make a new fucking Splinter Cell game. Like, yeah. And honestly, it seemed like a, oh shit, we're catching a lot of fire right now for NFTs, we need somebody to fucking ease up on the, on the gas a bit. Quick, tell them we're making Sam Fisher shit. Yeah. And so they did. 
Halo Infinite's opening uh, championship series in Raleigh had a great many storylines uh, and was uh, had an amazing big team battle show match. That was the best part of the entire weekend, uh, for sure. And perhaps most uh, pervasively, an endless series of connection issues that dragged things on for far longer than intended. Uh, this was definitely a case of the casters quite literally carrying the show. Uh, I mean, you were seeing Golden Boy, everyone was there doing their, their thing. Uh, and if they weren't casters that have been doing this for fucking ever, this event would have just crashed and burned. These guys liter and girls literally carried the broadcast for hours at a time with dropouts and connection issues uh, within the game while they were trying to get games going. Uh, observers would drop, or players would drop, or it would take forever to get everyone together. And then eventually at one point they swapped the PCs out for Xboxes that they'd like, uh, you know, scrounge together to make all of this work. And, and nobody really knows if it's, like, part of the game, like, uh, a game mechanical issue, or if it was because even when they're doing LAN, they still have to, like, apparently the game still has to talk to the Xbox Live server, so it's LAN with an asterisk. And so people were wondering why this was happening, but regardless, the result was, like, the first day or two, I mean, they were burning the midnight oil, not, you know, to use the same joke twice, literally, like, like five, six hours over, over time. Uh, because of all that. So the casters on day two look like smashed assholes. They're like, we ain't getting paid enough for this <laughs> shit, but I'm on. committed. They came on. Dude, dark dark circles just down to like their cheekbones. They look like they just banged like nine rails of coke to keep themselves going. Uh, yeah. And uh, and they maybe they did. I don't know. I mean, probably not. But all the same, it was a rough weekend for the casters, but they made it work. And honestly, when the game was working and all of this stuff was going on, uh, a lot of um, uh, amazing storylines, great matches, incredibly close nail biters. The big team uh, battle match was was super entertaining and uh, and also a nail biter down to the wire. So uh, uh, other than the game, obviously needing a lot more work. Uh, very successful weekend for them and lots of people looking forward to uh, their next major, which I think is in Anaheim, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in related, oh, in related Halo Infinite news, 343 Industries is going to come back from their holiday with a uh, mountain of work as Big Team Battle is broken. Hackers are becoming more common. The ranking system is starting to crack at the upper end of the, uh, of the spectrum. Server desync is everywhere. And lots more. So they're coming back from holiday getting immediately reamed, uh, and God bless them when they enter the office because they're immediately going to get some PTSD, I'm sure. Uh, they're also continuing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Destiny for the worst pricing in an online shop. Most recently, they put out a Mr. Chief, which is just like a, a meme AI core. Just the AI core. It's basically their voice. You're paying for the voice. Mm. 20 bucks! Wow. US. Wow. Just for that. Damn. They're digging. People are buying, too. They're digging, yeah. That's they're definitely going whale hunting. Uh, but uh, I, I, I we'll see if that continues in 2022. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 got delayed into spring of 2022, which is great because I forgot it was even supposed to launch this year. Uh, Tencent bought up Turtle Rock Studios, the company do, that did Back for Blood, the totally not Left for Dead, Left for Dead. Uh, adding to their 100. This was in 2021. 100 video game related company acquisitions and investments. So between their acquisitions and investments, they did a hundred different companies in 2021. That's like one every, I mean, that's really one every basically three days uh, that they were doing this. 30% of them are companies that are outside of China. So they did a fair amount of expansion outside of China this year and spent a shitload of money in general. Yeah, and the 10 cent stock, man, just got fucked this year too. So, I mean... That was with the Chinese uh, government doing the crackdown on video games. They got yeah. they got hit pretty hard by that, and probably also why thirty percent of their investments have been outside of China uh, yeah. in terms of the companies that they're choosing. Uh, YouTube announced that Minecraft has a content specifically has crossed a huge milestone: one trillion views, wow. Mr. Black, across Minecraft content. They did a little mini. A compilation video to celebrate and had some other things on YouTube during the day where they announced it But one trillion views if you're wondering whether or not Minecraft has and continues to be popular There's your answer yes. Very much very much so <laughs> very much so and lastly a true end of an era mr. Black as John Madden suddenly passed away at the age of 85 this week Godspeed mr. Madden uh, for bringing us both legendary football commentary many many memes 
know? and the namesake of more or less the only football game for many years. Yep. After 2K bit it. <laughs> uh, and so my question is, or my hope, I should say, is, is that next year, 2023, the cover, John Madden. And not yeah, some special edition bullshit. Just yeah. make it everything. John yeah, Madden. They, they need to. They need to. And he hasn't been on the cover in many years. Yeah. So I think I think it'd be a good... That's a send-off, right? Yeah, it's a good send-off. I wonder if they will be able to retain Madden prob- as, the, as the name. Prob- oh, yeah, they probably own the rights and everything uh, to the name and whatnot. Mm. But, yeah, there you go. True end of an era. And speaking of an end of an era, that's the end of this segment, which means it's time to sell out, Mr. Black. Patreon out of, out of practice. Patreon. Hey man, I still sell on my own stream. Patreon.com okay. slash lag TV. Head on over there. Throw some money at the damn screen. Um, I know we had two weeks off, but uh Adam was buying a house since the holidays. So, you know, um, it is what it is. But uh we do appreciate it. And if you don't have money, that's totally fine. Just go on YouTube, hit the like I don't button. have any now either. Yeah, leave a comment. Actually, you should really go over to <laughs> Patreon.com now and uh, throw all of the money <laughs> on there. Um, so yeah, just go support any way that you can. Share it. Let us know in the comment section um, if there's something that you guys would like to see with the podcast in the new year. So I think we got to spice something up. Because mm. um, we've been doing this for over what four, almost four years. This is so, the fourth. This is the this fourth is, season, and I broke it up by years. So this is we're going into into year five. Yeah. Um. So it's it, there, there's that. Uh. We also got uh Elgato. Um. If you guys don't already have a stream deck, a uh um, geez, there's so many damn products now. Uh, a Wave Three, a green screen. The 4K capture card, the key light. Um, you know, we've got sound dampeners for your uh, for your walls. I mean, it's endless. Go over there and support them because in the new year they ain't paying us no more, which means I ain't plugging <laughs> them no more. So uh, go do it now. In all honesty, they're an awesome company, one way or another. I, I highly I highly uh, recommend uh, if you guys are going for anything uh, gaming related or video related anything like that just head on over to Elgato see if they got something uh, for you Nord VPN all right they will be still paying us so mm. I so I will be continuing <laughs> to plug Nord VPN if you guys don't already have a VPN. You need to head on over to nordvpn.com slash OTT. Use the promo code OTT and get yourself a massive discount. Some bonus months when you get a two-year subscription. You support us. You support the sponsor. It's a win-win. Stay safe. Stay anonymous. Watch different regions of Netflix. Maybe hack into the system and watch yourself Matrix 4 on HBO Max. You can do whatever it is that you want when you've got NordVPN. You can stream on the servers, game on the servers, stream and game on the servers at the same time. Guys, NordVPN.com slash OTT. Keep supporting them so they keep supporting us and they've got a good product. It's about to be 2022. If you don't have a VPN in 2022, you're just not on the internet enough. All right, and I know you guys are on the internet, so go ahead and get it. You can use it on your smartphone, your laptop, your PC, your Macs, your your anything. You hook it up to your damn router if you want. All right, stop using public Wi-Fi and going on their network. It's, it's twenty twenty two. They gonna, like, like Vince the Slap Chop. Hey, they gonna steal your NFTs, man. <laughs> ha! Protect them NFTs. Protect those apes. All right, NordVPN.com slash OTT. That's it. How has there not been an NFT with the, like the ape, the ape shit? How has there not been a Harambe one yet? I don't know. How the fuck have we, like, that's just free, that's free real estate. 
NFTs are such a fucking meme, bro. A lot, like half of my fun on Twitter lately is the discourse constantly back and forth between people with NFTs. And the best part about it is that both pro NFT and anti NFT, 95% on both sides have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. So it's like just watching the blind leading the blind in a, some sort of like cockfight and nobody knows what the hell they're doing. It's incredible. Now it's time for movies and TV. Harry Potter 20th anniversary event trailer landed. That's uh, popping off here pretty soon. And it seems that JK is in fact still going to be a part uh, of that uh, of that 20th anniversary event. I would hope so. It's her property. <laughs> it, is, it is. It ain't happening without her. She owns uh, it. Shame that Alan Rickman couldn't have been there, of course. Uh, uh, for me, Alan Rickman was like the cornerstone of why I love the, the movies anyway. I never read the books, but uh, the movies. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, Shane, that, that, uh, that he couldn't have been there for this, uh, would have been, would have been nice to see, but all the same, that's coming up. Uh, and I'll always say this, man, I'm, I'm, I, I fucks with the Harry Potter movies. I don't like, there's something about them. I think, I think a lot of it, honestly, is the music is fire. The, 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 the fucking, uh, the theme for Harry Potter gets me for some reason. I don't know why. I have no emotional attachment to, like, the times in which the Harry Potter movies came out. So I don't know what it is about it that, like, hits a certain, like, nostalgia bone, uh, in there. But it does. It does. Uh, and Alan, and Alan Rickman. I mean, that's kind of just the, the two core I didn't even watch all the Harry Potters, man. I, I, I checked out. I just... It's not like it's not really it's not my jam. Well, that's I understand why. I mean, it's, I I I uh, I Harry Potter for me like the peak is like right like most things. It's like the middle bunch. the The beginning and end I can live without, but that middle grouping is what like uh, what I enjoyed the the the, uh, the most. John Wick Chapter Four moved to twenty twenty three, Mister Black. Mm. Probably to make sure that people forget about The Matrix 4 in time for them to want to see Keanu Reeves again uh, in John Wick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, the trailer for the unbearable weight of massive talent dropped. It looks so good! Let's go! It looks so good! I'm so ready for that movie! It does look good. It looks way it looks way better than it has any fucking right to look. It does look good. It looks so dude, Pedro Pascal is gonna eat that role oh, alive. Yeah. He's gonna dude, he's gonna steal the show. He's 100%. gonna be percent He's gonna be the guy. <laughs> that movie looks so fucking good. I like and like he's so I, you gotta love Nick because he's so fucking self-aware. That even in the trailer, like, he's standing there and like, and Pedro's showing him all like this memorabilia, and there's that fucking wax statue. He says, "Is that supposed to be me? It's grotesque. I'll give you twenty thousand for it." <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, it's it's good. It's good. Uh, yeah, he said that he he'll never watch that movie. He said he said he can't. He oh, said of he course. Can't watch it. He's like you know. Of course. He said, he, he said he's playing himself, but just like the more eccentric <laughs> version of himself and like the director was like, you know, pushing him to like, you know, the crazy parts of Nicolas Cage is like what this character is all the time. Apparently. Oh yeah. So, like he's just off his rocker. <laughs> it looks so good, man. Oh my God. Like I, I had my hopes up just because the concept, when I read the synopsis, I was like, this is, this is either going to be the worst movie ever made or, the, or one of the greatest films ever fucking produced. And right now, it's skewing towards, it's skewing towards greatness. Um, Pedro Pascal, fuck me, he's so committed to this role. I uh, like he just he's all in. Everyone in this movie is going to be insane. It's, it's going to be uh, quite funny. So be great. I look forward to that. Do we have a release date on on that yet? Pretty sure it's like early next year. Is it? Bless you. Excuse me. Bless uh, you. But yeah, the un the unbearable weight of massive. T just the name. Yeah, it's perfect. Is incredible. It's April in April. Let's go. So, a few months. Let's go. You know what wasn't legendary? Apparently, I haven't seen it yet, so I'll reserve my my judgment on my timeline. It slowly shifted. It started at sixty percent hate, forty percent love. Now it's more like seventy thirty. 
Uh, the Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. So what I discovered without getting spoiled, uh, what I was talking to, to Panic, was that, you know, of the many issues that it had, there was even a portion of this film dedicated to basically talking about how nobody, the, how they didn't want to do the, how Lana didn't want to do the film. And, like, there was, like, some fourth wall breaking fucking meta shit. Bro, this movie is so meta and so self-aware that it's almost like a parody. It's almost like, and it's so over the top done that way, and it's so shoved down your throat, at least in the first, like, 30, 45 minutes of the movie, that it almost starts to diminish everything that came before it. It's ah. almost, It's almost like it's a joke. Like, the whole, everything's a fucking joke. And uh, it's uh, it's the more I think about it, like this this movie is worse than any Star Wars movie ever. This movie is worse than any. Uh, I I I th this is really bad. If you're a diehard Matrix fan, or like you're a pretty freaking you like Matrix a lot, this is gonna just gonna crush your soul. Like I can't wait for you to see this so that I can shit all over it. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's fucking do they, bad, dude. Like, do does it feel like the does, does it feel like Lana torched it so that nobody else could take the reins to do Matrix properly in the future? Like, does it feel like a self sabotage kind of a situation? Well, that's not it. It's it's the studio, dude. They mention Warner Brothers in the movie, man. <laughs> All right, the studio was going to make another Matrix movie, and Lana has the rights to 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 the Matrix. And her rights are, will eventually go. Expire, yeah. Expire. So they, if she didn't want to do it, she had an option. If she didn't want to do the movie, then somebody else was going to take the property and make it their own. She didn't want that. But it, it's clear that she didn't want to make this movie. But she made it anyway because she probably wanted control and wanted to tell the story that she wanted to tell. But, you know, the studio must have pulled their option to have this movie made, and it was getting made nonetheless, and she seemed like she didn't want to be there. In fact, from what I heard from numerous sources, that when COVID hit hard and they had to shut down production, she tried to stop the movie, and the cast basically rallied to get her to want to, to finish it. She just wanted to just bounce. She just didn't want to do it. It, dude, the movie is so fucking bad, it hurts, man. The, like, I'm not going to spoil anything more than that, but, like, when you watch it, I'll go into detail about the shit that was just heinous. But, like, the action sequences are fucking bad. Very, very bad. 90% of what fucking Neo does in this movie is this. Yeah, I can tell for the trailers, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, this is it. I mean, we're, this is John Wick here, right? <laughs> like, you've got Keanu Reeves, God. who's aging, but still very capable of some of the best action ever done on film, Bruh. and you reduce it to force push. Bruh. <laughs> there's like, there's like no leather in the movie either. Like, nobody wears leather. Fucking Hugo Weaving. Nowhere's to be found. He's not in the movie. And apparently... Did they... They, so, they, they, well, wrote, they, they yeah. wrote the part for him. Oh, then okay. there was scheduling conflicts. So we didn't do it. <laughs> I personally think Ske he was like... Scheduling conflict. <laughs> I think he was like, bro, this fucking script sucks ass. I yep. want nothing to do with this. I'm Hugo. Yep. All right? I am a decorated actor. Yep. You know, I am not in, and you know, they would have paid him a bag and a half to go there and, and reprise his role. It was bad. The new budget Morpheus is like <laughs> watching a dude try and act like a younger Morpheus. And it's not good. No, no fucking it's bad. The new agent Smith is is f it's a fucking joke. The whole movie is a fucking joke. There are two aspects of the movie that I that I enjoyed. That I was like, okay, 
okay, I'm behind these two little things. But they shove it down your throat so hard that it becomes a joke. It becomes, oh. it literally becomes a, I, bro, all I can do is say, watch this movie. This, you know, they were famous for bullet time in the, in the, the previous Matrix. They've got this new thing in the movie, and I won't spoil what it is. You're going to know. Actually, when you first see it, you're going to be like, what's going on here? <laughs> It, is this like what's it's it's kind of almost like a um like a Game of Thrones thing where everything it's not that it was really dark, but like it was so fucking bad that you're like, what is what is happening on screen? <laughs> what why is this here? This is an almost two hundred million dollar fucking movie. Oh and, and the effects, although the whole, you know, machine world and the shit that they do there looks phenomenal and it's that feels like Matrix. The actual Matrix itself doesn't feel like Matrix. It is some of the worst CGI for this new thing that they got going on, which really isn't new to begin with. They just kind of explain this in a different... The effect that they use, it's hard on the eyes. It's bad. It's ch choppy and horrible. It's just... God awful, dude. What's Neil Patrick Harris? The guy, listen, I like him, but his role sucks ass. He's not menacing at all. It's a shitty villain. It's just bad. I mean, it's fucking bad. Where are the agents in this movie? Where, like, where this is, is so dis this is so disappointing because bro, the trailers and whatnot. Oh my god, bro! They led the me to believe in the trailer. They use the same fucking song in the movie, and it is, it's White almost, rabbit. A, it's, a, yes, it's almost verbatim. The trailer is like a scene from the movie, <laughs> and you're like, I already saw all this, and nothing's changed. It's really fucking bad, dude. It's really fucking bad. This movie has made, it made like 12, made domestic opening was 12 million bucks. <laughs> it's made 68 million dollars worldwide to date it's as a budget of 190 million dollars this movie is a colossal failure it's so fucking bad it hurts to even talk about it it's horrible the, adam in here's every a conceivable here, way here's the question does it's lana bad. does lana ever get to make another movie again big budget in, she's in supposed, hollywood she's I hope not. She's dog shit at making movies. <laughs> she hasn't made a good movie since the first Matrix. Everything's been shit. <laughs> Who is giving her money to do this? Not just some $200 million, bro. Dude, uh, like, I, I can't put into words how bad this movie is, my dude. There are, there are characters that come back from the old Matrix, and they just look old. There's, like, <laughs> there's one in particular... There's one in particular who's a female. I won't spoil who it is. It's, it's almost like the movies have been like 20 years ago. They've bro, aged. Bro, <laughs> there's, there's, there's one very famous actress who isn't really a famous actress okay. that's in the movie. All right. All right. I think she might even have been in the trailers, but I'm not going to say. All right. She's in this movie. Uh-huh. And she has way too much screen time. <laughs> she's, she's playing an older version of herself because everybody's aging. And she's like, or she's she's really old in this movie, and it sounds like she's acting like an old woman, like oh, oh here's my granny, you know. It's <laughs> and she's got way too much screen time, and she's you don't even like her. She's not likable. It's bad, dude. There's one guy in particular from I do believe Matrix Reloaded, who's in this. Yes, Matrix Reloaded. He's in this movie. All right, you're gonna know. Actually, you might not even know him. You, you, okay, I've seen people see this guy and they're like, dude, what, what's up with this? I'm just going to say, what's up with this French guy here? Like, who the fuck is this? There's this action sequence. And I'll say, there's a French guy in the movie who was in the other Matrix movies. This dude oh, shows up. Oh, the fucking what's his name? Uh, uh, does bro, that mean that the girl you're talking about is the girl that did his his better half in that yes, film as well? Yes, That's who I yes. thought you were talking so, about, yeah. He's in this movie, bro. I'm not going to spoil. Is that Selma Hayek? No, I'm not. No, 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 um, no, no. Bro, What's her name? Frick. 
Uh, dude, anyway, yeah. This guy, this guy has he has some dialogue in this movie. It was some of the most painful, cringeworthy shit I've ever seen in my life. It made no sense. That whole action sequence looked like they were sitting on a fucking shitty movie set where like bro the 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 choreography was so <laughs> was so bad people were like it, it was they were they were like jittering around and trying to find their spot and their position it was almost like they were trying to find an x <laughs> on the floor where they're supposed to stand and this fucking french dude is 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 having this dialogue in the scene while all this mess and mayhem is going on and it's not good at all Dude, once I saw that shit, I knew that there it was irredeemable. And this happens like an hour and 15 minutes in the movie. It's irredeemable. After that, I was completely checked out. There was no way the movie was winning me back. It was an embarrassment. The Lana, the way she filmed the first like 40 minutes of this movie, it was almost like she only wanted to use natural lighting. So like she you'd be taken uh, there'd be scenes with the sun and shit. And it, it was, was like, everyone's like back. It was like this. It's like every. It's like <laughs> this. Every scene is like this, where there's like a light glowing, and they're it's just like this. It looks just like this. It looks just like this. The Matrix looks just like this, and they're they're doing a scene, and there's a, there's a beam of light. No matter where you go, there's a beam of light to the point where everything else is like horribly lit, and everybody's just acting, and it's it it feels so bad. Thank God. They got like 20, 30 percent in the movie, and they said, "Stop this madness! You, you are, you are not lens flaring anymore. The, whatever the sun <laughs> flare, you ain't doing it." It was that bad. It's the cinematography. Only about the movie is like fucking two hours and forty minutes of of hell, and there is about <laughs> fifteen to twenty minutes of it actually feeling like a Matrix movie, where the cinematography kind of feels like a matrix a lot of it is in the machine world and it it feels and looks like the matrix the rest of it it doesn't even feel the the, the, the color palette isn't matrix the cinematography isn't there there every the, it's all close-ups it's fucking bad the hand-to-hand -hand combat which very little most of it is ha, 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 ha. people just getting <laughs> blasted with like beams of air or whatever i don't fucking know bro the movie is bad. Listen, I can't make this up. 15 of minutes of this fucking movie was actual clips of the fucking other movies. Dude, they would show characters and they would do a flashback of, a, of the movie that they came from. So you know that it's that character because they're... They're recasting so many people that you see an Agent Smith and it's like, doo -doo -doo, and then you see Hugo weaving, standing there. And then you realize that everything they showed in the past is better. It looked better. It was filmed better. The actors were better. The shots were better. Bro, it is so incredibly self-awarely bad that it's be it became a joke on itself. They should be ashamed of themselves <laughs> for making this movie. Keanu Reeves. He's trying his hardest right now to no longer be the darling of Hollywood. It's that bad. He should never, ever have made this movie. Ever. It's that bad. He should have read this script. I don't care how much of a friend he is to Lana and the rest of them. He needed to step his foot down and say, listen, if, if Hugo Weaving, Lawrence Fishburne, and the rest of them ain't in this fucking movie, I am not going in this movie. Listen, Neo, Trinity, great. Awesome to see them together doing their thing. Fantastic. That's the best part of the film. Great. Awesome. I love me some Neo. But Jesus, fuck. The movie is awful. It's the worst movie of the decade. I've, I haven't seen a movie worse than this. I don't know the last movie I saw that was worse than this. Every movie I've seen this year is infinitely better than this. It's a fucking dog shit movie. It's so bad, and it spits on the face of hardcore Matrix fans. Dude, it's like if, if Kathleen Kennedy made a Star Wars film and told everybody in the movie that she didn't want to make Star Wars anymore and that everybody was a joke and none of it really mattered and everything is fucking dog shit, and then they filmed it. They didn't even have lightsabers in it. They just decided, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> Jedis, no longer lightsabers. No longer force this. No longer this, no longer that. 
It's like they, they, they took everything that you loved and then they shit all over it. It's fucking awful. And the part that irks me the most is that there's people that like this shit. The shit, I go on Rotten Tomatoes and there are souls on here. It's got a 64% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's unbelievable. Nostalgia's Ow. a hell of a drug, bro. Nostalgia. How? No, there's nothing nostalgic about this, Adam. <laughs> That's the part that hurts. <laughs> Who liked this? How? <laughs> the action, dude, there's, the action is so bad. And there's barely any of it. There's no, like, good music. The only thing that feels like The Matrix is like the sound effects were like <laughs> and it's just like they're doing all the sound effects for nothing for a bunch of 60 year olds running around in fucking capes <laughs> it's so fucking bad man it's so bad you i'm know sorry what? this you know what's great about this rant and how and how you're so confused as to how anyone could possibly like it this sounds exactly how i sounded when i was reviewing and talking about final fantasy 7 remake yeah, bro. This is the exact same scenario bro. where I cannot fathom how anyone could consider it good in any degree, and it shits all over the uh, all over the the source material in Dude. every possible way. Yeah, but like and at I'm least just, Final I'm... Fantasy, the characters in the game didn't do it. Like it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so it's weird true. to hear the actual characters just straight up air, like literally name dropping Warner Brothers and bitching about Warner Brothers. In their own fucking movie. The fuck? I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't even going to start raging about this. The more I think about it, <laughs> the more, the more I, this is actually the worst movie I've seen in probably a decade. I'm not joking. And it's not because technically it's a bad film. It's they took everything and they just did nothing with it. You know, if this was a new franchise in and itself, and it was just a movie that didn't have all this history with all these beloved characters, and you bring back a fraction of them, you don't even offer Lawrence Fishburne a role in this movie, and you that's have that's you so have, like I can I can understand if they offered, and he said no, just like Hugo Weaving said scheduling conflicts, as if Hugo Weaving is doing literally fucking anything right now, bro. He he didn't want to be part of this, bro. He no. did not want to be part of this. No. He no, did not. He was smart. Oh, he is laughing right now. He is <laughs> laughing right now. He is there. There. I mean, it, it. It just would have been a bad look. I'm so happy he did not put his name. It's to the point where I have to forget this exists because if I take this as canon, I'm gonna hate the Matrix trilogy, like the like the first one. I'm I'm just not gonna enjoy it. So I have to I have to like delete this from my being. I have to just know. <laughs> <laughs> that this was this this was something that nobody wanted to do, and it's clear. You can tell nobody's having fun. Nobody is enjoying themselves. Nobody. Well, this when is, I was this watching. Is work. When I was watching the interviews, like the odd interview or whatever, they were you know their press tours or whatever for the film. You know, Keanu is really good at just being laissez faire about anything, right? Keanu just lives. He doesn't give a fuck. But Carrie looked like like Carrie M. Os looked like she wanted to fucking just be anywhere but in a chair talking about the matrix in every one of these fucking uh, she knew it was of, bad, of these man. interviews she knew she knew. she knew it was bad man she it's knew it was not, bad it's not good man it's not good it's not good at all yeah. it's really bad listen guys i i encourage if you're a matrix fan to just go out and watch it just so that you know and then never watch any other matrix movies that come out from here on out this this really truly is a spit in the face of diehard Matrix fans. It had some. It had some clever ideas that was just drowned in a very unclever delivery, and to the point where it just got shoved down your throat. Where you're like, dude, is this a fucking SNL skit? This is a joke. This this cannot be real. And it, it it's it looked like somebody like somebody at the top of their class in film school was given handed a $190 million budget to go make a movie based off of the first Matrix and then go and see what you can do. So, you know, the script, pretty fucking bad. It's got some competent levels to it. There there are some things, like the whole thing isn't a fucking mess. The vast majority of it's a fucking mess. 
But the whole thing's a fucking mess if you compare it to what they're doing and the things they're saying in there. It's a fucking gong show to the to the tenth degree. It's awful. If I had to give it a number, it's it's at most at most a three out of ten. At most, if they didn't shove the shit down your throat so much. And if it actually was filmed like an other Matrix movie with the color palette, the cinematography, and they took the shit a little bit more serious, as a movie, it'd probably be a five. And I, that's not, there's, dude, everything you loved about the Matrix, none of that's in this. The, except Trinity and Neo. That's it. That's it. And they do fine. They do fine. But so they, here's. They, does it, they, I, I don't remember them smiling. They don't, it's like they don't even want to be there. I, did anybody that watched the movie, did Neo smile in this film ever? Did Trinity smile in this film ever? Did it seem like they were glowing on set of The Matrix where they're like, you know what, man? This scene's really going to be a fucking, uh, is, this one's going to be it. This is going to be the scene that's going to really grab. Nobody was having a good time. It's a depressing film. The story shit makes no sense. It's bad. That's it. Question. And when you watch it, we are going to go in depth, and I'm going to oh, yeah. fucking tear it. I'm going to oh, tear. Yeah. I'm going to bend it over and tear it a new one. Well, when I when I get a chance to see it, we'll go back. We'll revisit, and uh, and I'm sure I'll have some choice words as well. There's no attitude in this movie. There, there's no. <laughs> there's 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 nothing. There's no charisma. There's no oomph. There's nothing. Well, it sounds there's, like a bunch of people going through the motions, and that's like that's like it. And the motions are not good. No, they're not. They're not. It's bad. It's really, truly that bad, man. And there's these weird zombie-like things at one point in the film. Like you're gonna see, you're gonna see this shit, and you're gonna be like, "What the fuck is this? What do, am I in the new Alan Wake video game?" Here's a question. You just might then. be in the Matrix. <laughs> here's here's a question. Then it's not on HBO in in Canada. It's that's just in the Nord States. VPN. Nord VPN. The um, my question is, if the Matrix were to continue to be a franchise moving forward, then obviously we don't want Lana having anything to do with this fucking film anymore or oh, these man. films. So who do you entrust in the seat? No one. No one. No one. This what they need to do. And what this should have been, they should have taken the 200 million bucks and let Lana make a godforsaken series on Netflix or whatever fucking streaming service they wanted and have taken 10 hours, 10 episodes, 8 episodes, I don't give a fuck, and have made a television show because this felt like a bad television show based off The Matrix with a couple of characters that flew in to say what's up. They needed to pass the torch. It's a, it's the fucking matrix. You can do anything you want. They needed to have Neo and Trinity come back. Let everybody else fucking go and do their own thing. Pass the torch. Because the only other redeeming character was Bugs. The girl with the blue hair. She was great. She felt like Matrix. She was good. I fucks with Bugs. Everybody else can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Nothing else worked. Nothing. This should have been a series. This should not have been a blockbuster. There was nothing blockbustery about this. Anybody and everybody should be watching this at home on the small screen and enjoying it and going deep into the into the uh, the, the anthology of the Matrix. That's what it should have been. And it should have been called Matrix Reboot. Not Resurrections, Resur this, Resur that reboot it, start it fresh, remove this stupid idea that they had about what the Matrix really is, and make a show, and do hour-long episodes, and then they stand a chance. The movies, it's over. It's, fu it's, it's so, done. It's so, it bothers me so much because we saw it happen with Star Wars, and now we're, we've seen it now with, with the Matrix, where, you know, the bar is not high for being able, like, if you're going to go out and do one more film with the original actors and actresses, right? And this is their, like, this is, like, you know, the, the time this he makes it. sense, 20-year anniversary, let's do something, let's let's add a bookend to this uh, with the original cast uh, and, and just, and wrap it up. 
It bothers me that, just like with Star Wars, the film that it's going to end on with the originals is dog shit. And I know a lot of people don't consider, you know, The Last Jedi or whatever to be dog shit. That's up for your own interpretation. Fuck what they did with all the original characters in the, in the Star Wars sequels. They fucked every one of them. Bro, this is so much worse. Every one of them. And, now, is... and now we're seeing it with The Matrix in worse fashion than Star Wars had. And we're oh, not yeah. going to get follow-ups, you know, so you go out on a, you go out on a, on a hot fucking mess, yeah, which is just depressing. The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker were competent films. And at least it felt like Star Wars. Yeah. No matter you, no matter if you yeah, still didn't like, like the decision making and yeah. all this other stuff, that's a whole nother bag of worms. But at least there was a consistency to it. It's almost like Lana was like, "Hey, me and my sister, we used to do these things, but this is my movie, and I'm gonna put my own fucking spin on it, and I'm gonna put a stamp on there, and this is gonna be my my jam, motherfucker. We don't want your jam. We wanted the old jam. In fact, nobody even wanted the old jam." Why is this even greenlit? Because, you know, let's be real. Matrix 2 and 3, not as good as the first, but they were still... Matrix was still cool. All right? Down. This... This wasn't it, man. This wasn't it. And you, when you watch this movie, I know for a fact, bro, you're going to fucking hate this film. I know for a god... I know without a doubt... I, after gonna, I saw the first couple of reactions, you know, I was pretty certain that I wasn't going to be a particular fan for sure. So, man, what a, what a disappointing way to, to send out one of the great film franchises of all it's time. Awful. awful. What a way to do it. And well, like, and not what Keanu Reeves needs right now. Well, yeah. Like, we, we he's going to do anything. If it's a friend of his, he's, he's going to do it. You know, that's like... Keanu's double-edged sword is, you know, he, he he's, uh, Keanu can read a script, and if it's for a friend, and it's not an ideal, he's probably still gonna do the fucking film. Dude, it was funny, this is the last thing I'll say, I was watching interviews, because I was, I was starting to get, I was trying to amp myself up, like, I, I was ready to be disappointed. Yeah, yeah. To myself up. And they're like, listen, we've, we've heard every possible scenario on where the Matrix could go from here, and how we could come back, and all this stuff. <laughs> And nobody got this. What we've done, nobody got it right. Nobody guessed this. And you know why they didn't guess it? Because it's fucking shit. <laughs> it's so fucking Nobody would have bad. imagined they'd be stupid enough to go that route. It's so bad. It's painful. So if I saw sitting... it on Christmas, it would have ruined <laughs> my fucking Christmas. I'm not joking. I would have looked back 30 years from now and, I, and somebody would have said, what was your worst Christmas ever? I would have said it was the Christmas that I watched fucking The Matrix on Christmas. Thank God I watched it on the 22nd of December. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. It would have overshadowed everything I'd done that day. I was salty, man. I was salty. <laughs> I was salt. I digress. Well, hopefully John Wick Four doesn't suck. That would that would now that re, that and that would just be depressing. We like yes. that. That's if John if John Wick Four sucks, Keanu's just done done at that point. I think you can't you can't do shitty Matrix and shitty John Wick and expect to fucking make it you know make it out alive. Even if you're Keanu Reeves, so hopefully hopefully that doesn't go the oh, way of the Matrix. Oh, did I tell you I fell asleep during it too? <laughs> I fell asleep, and out of respect, I dozed off because it was fucking boring. I dozed off probably for about five, seven minutes. And then I went upstairs. I grabbed something to drink, kind of like got myself in the mode. I came down. I rewound, I rewound the parts I missed. And then I followed through. I fell asleep. And it was 7 p.m. Seven. <laughs> Bad. It's good stuff. All right. Fair ball. Well. Moving on from the Matrix. Please. <laughs> Spider-Man. Polar opposite. Complete opposite. Complete opposite. Crushing it. Largest yep. DC movie to date. Making money hand over fist. Everyone. Every, uh, sorry. Uh, everyone making 
so much money in this film, so so loved that people out of nowhere have decided that that Andrew Garfield Spider Man should make a comeback. That's how good this film is. So good that they've convinced people that Andrew Garfield Spider Man needs a resurrection of his own. It was a good. It was a good movie. I'll leave it at that. It was a good movie, and I think if you haven't seen it. You should watch it. You've probably been spoiled already because it's the internet. And it is impossible. It yet, yeah. It's pretty much impossible. Yeah. Um, but it's a damn good movie. Is it the best movie of the year? No. That award goes to Dune. Straight up. Um, is it the best comic book movie of the year? Possibly. Possibly. Shang-Chi is right up there. I mean, I'll be honest. I had a little bit better of a time in Shang-Chi than I did Spider-Man because it was a fresh new IP for me and they did it so well. And that fucking bus fight scene in the beginning of that movie was Nuts. the best fight scene I've seen in a very very long like years like very long time john john wick included it's up there man it, it, especially for a marvel film god damn there was so much style you could tell they were having fun in that movie you know they were enjoying it but the new spider-man it's up there it's definitely in the top three movies of the year and if you are a spider-man fan boy and you love the spider-man in general this is probably going to be the best Spider-Man experience you'll ever have. Maybe outside of Spider-Man 2 from way back when. This thing is an absolute love letter to all Spider-Man fans out there. And it's an incredible film. And for the first time in a long time, we got Peter Parker kind of doing his own thing where he's not really... You've got some of... you've You know, you've got Doctor Strange in there, but it's nice that he isn't crowded with like three other big superheroes and he's out there doing his thing and my god tom holland acts his fucking ass off in this film it's just so good he is spider-man um it's hard to choose what the best spider-man of all time is uh but man he's making this his own and this is the most uh this is just a damn good Spider-Man movie. It really, truly is, man. It It's really that good. And I would say even if you're a casual Spider-Man fan and he's not like your favorite Avenger or anything like that, this is still going to hit all the right marks. This was as pure of an experience for a film as Endgame was for, for a Marvel Cinematic Universe experience. This just hit all the right notes it was predictable in some ways, unpredictable in others, and all the things you wanted it to happen happened and more. And there were so many Easter eggs and things that were said that, you know, is is really great. I still personally enjoyed Shang-Chi a little bit more uh, from, from a movie-going experience because I was just wowed by it. Um, but damn, this was good. This was damn good, and I'll watch it again for sure. And they're getting rewarded for it because it's already long since passed a bill uh, at this point. And in today's world, to pass a bill that quick is still mighty impressive. It's not like the theaters are, you know, running max capacity yet. Uh, and so, yeah, they're obviously doing very well by it. So, uh, so good work. Spoderman. Out there good. putting the work in. Uh, speaking of good, The Witcher Season 2. I watched all of that. Uh, way better than Season 1. Yeah, I'm, and uh, Kale and I are on episode five. I don't okay, know, how so many episodes is there? Eight. Eight, okay. So yeah, we'll probably watch two tonight, so definitely by the time the podcast happens again, it'll, I'll be done so we can like... Yeah, I'll, I'll just say that it was very good, and, um, and Henry Cavill, uh, does an amazing job of being Geralt, uh, yeah. and thank God he is on set... Because the director, uh, he has corrected the director on more than a few occasions in which we have, would have gotten substantially shittier Witcher if it wasn't for Henry Cavill being on set. So, uh, and that's especially true because they have deviated from the books, obviously, like they tend to, uh, and, and even the games. 
Um, and so if you're going to deviate, you need to do it, you know, carefully. And his suggestions and how they've they've delivered this seri- uh, this season thus far for me. Uh, I like very, I like there good. was a, I think the episode I watched last night. They mention in the in the show about storylines and and uh, timelines and how it's confusing and stuff like yeah they they, they, they self reference them they they, yeah, they they tease themselves about that yeah yeah if only the matrix you know took a little note out of that where you say one <laughs> sentence you have a and chuckle drop and you it. move on yeah. instead of making forty five minutes of it <laughs> that would have been good it'd have been great it'd been great uh and the only other thing I watched this week uh, for this segment uh, uh Em and I watched um don't look up. Oh, yes. I'm hearing good things about it. Uh, I'm going to watch um, it. Yes. Uh, very good. Um, very well done. Everyone does a, a fantastic job in it. The only, uh, like, the only thing that I'll say about it is that Jonah Hill is perfect for the character he plays, but it's mostly because whoever wrote that character wrote it thinking of Jonah Hill playing Jonah Hill in a movie, if you know what I mean. Like, Jonah Hill has, like, two characters... And they're both Jonah Hill. And this is 100% the case in this film. And so, while it's perfect, I maybe could have used, like, just taken a little bit of the Jonah Hill off of the Jonah Hill would have been nice. Everything else, fire. Uh, but the only, and the other thing was, is that for as good as it was, this is a very good, I think it's a very, very important film in general. Because it is a parody, really, a parody film. Um... But the thing that makes me, I was angry watching it because the, like, I'm laughing, but I'm also angry. And the reason behind that is, and I tweeted, when I tweeted about it, I said, you know, um, it made me angry because parody is basically dead. Uh, you can't, you can't write parody anymore because all of the parody of the past and parody that we're writing now, it isn't parody. It's what's actually happening. Like, everything you see in this film is barely, barely an exaggeration of what's really happening. I mean, like, like, if the knob was at a 4, they went to 4.1. I mean, they barely fucking moved the needle, and so you're laughing, and then you realize that you're laughing, but you shouldn't be because it's not really parody. It's like fucking reality that you're watching, and then you get angry. And they did a really good job of, like, blending, like, making very specific you know, references to the current age and in, in terms of uh, a, bu- a great number of political and, and environmental and, and whatnot uh, and pop culture and everything. They really did a good job of encapsulating everything that's been heightened in the last, like, maybe four or five years. Uh, and so I give it a, a big thumbs up. Just maybe have some alcohol <laughs> when you watch that bitch. Not because it's bad. But because you might have to take the edge off when you're watching it, because if you're like me and you're like, fuck, why am I laughing at this? This is hitting, this is hitting too close to home. It's a little too real. Uh, but very, very, uh, very, very good, uh, indeed. And when I saw it pop up, I was like, holy shit, Netflix is, like, sometimes Netflix gets a lot of people for these films. Uh, Uh, massive unlimited budgets. Fucking huge. So having everyone in this was, was quite impressive and everyone did a great job. Nobody phoned it in, and it was it was definitely uh, uh, worth the watch. So 100% watch that film, without question. Uh, that was pretty much it for me uh, in terms of the movies and TV. Is that uh, yep. all we got? Yeah. That's it. Which means it's time to move on to... Tech support. Patreon.com slash like TV is the place that you want to be for a couple of reasons. One, uh, you give us money, and we like that. Two, it allows you $10 or more per month. A couple of benefits. One is sometime between now... And uh, the end of the events of uh, of Don't Look Up, we're going to send out the, the, the fucking merchandise that I haven't been able to send out because of the fucking pandemic. <sighs> However, the other perk is you get to ask us questions each and every week on a post called Tech Support, where we answer as many of these bad boys as we can in the time that we have. So get on it. Uh, Mark Furry, real estate questions, lightning round, mortgages, fixed or variable, two, broker, big four bank or smaller bank, and three, 20, 25, or 30 years. Uh, for me, right now, uh, in Canada, variable because they'd have to, in order for you, at the fixed rates that they're handing out to at least people like me, first-time homeowners and most people that I've heard that have been buying homes, even if it's their second home, 
the National Bank in Canada would have to move the needle so far in such a short period of time that they'd basically fuck half the market doing so, uh, and so the odds of it are slim. You've got a pretty big window where variable is still going to be way less money per month than locking yourself in. And since in variable you can lock in pretty much in most packages at any time, 100%. I mean, my god, it was a massive difference between variable and, uh, and fixed. Um, maybe if you're going in with more, like you went in at like 20% and you just want to know exactly how much you're going to pay for five years and you think that variable is going to change enough in that five-year window maybe fixed but pretty much everyone that i talked to regardless if it was a bank or a broker uh or other buyers that have just entered the market within the last six to, uh, six to nine months to a year everyone has gone variable for now because of that fact that the national bank for canada would have to like literally destroy the fucking economy well here's here, here's here's my thing I'll, I'll i'll talk about since we'll do, we'll do one at a time yeah um i'm all for fix right now the reason why i'm all for fix is interest rates are not getting lower they're not going lower they're only going to go up yep so you know we're 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 not at rock bottom because it's it's gone up a little bit since like mid even like maybe nine months, 10 months ago, um, it, it's gone up very minimal, like super minimal. But uh, they're never going lower than this. So like next next month, I'm refinancing a triplex and I'll be able to lock in like two point, you know, probably like 2.2, right around there, 2.2, 2.3. Um, and I'll be locking in a fixed, not variable because, um, you know, variable is 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 it can be good, um, especially if we're already at high interest rates. Um, and variable also can be good because it, sometimes the terms are a little bit different. You have a little bit more flexibility um, on um, certain things like... You buy out early, you don't have this big a penalty. Yeah. Exactly, right? Because Because when you lock in a rate, the banks can't make anything more than that. With a variable... You know, you go like, yeah, you know, there might be a one year where you've saved a few bucks, um, but then another year where it's gone up. And I think interest rates are going to go up next year, um, not by a whole lot, probably a quarter um, of a point. Um, but I, I think we might see it go up like a quarter of a point every year, like next year and the year after. It might even go up half a point next year. Um, so, you know... If it was me, and it is going to be me next month, obviously, every, and that's going to be the thing with the, all these questions. Everybody's situation is different. Yeah. Some people are putting down more money. Some people are first-time home buyers. Some people don't have as good of credit. Some people don't have this. Some people don't have that. And you don't get the same favorable terms that somebody else that is established and have different things. And if that's the case, then sometimes maybe going variable makes more sense for a specific uh, reason, like if what Adam is in et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, when interest rates are at historic lows, lock that in. It is not going under 2%. It's not happening. It's just it. So, you know, Adam is also right. The banks aren't going to start going up an insane amount over the next couple of years because the economy will fold because they printed too much money and everybody is fucking buying houses and people are already buying more than what they can afford. So they the market will get fucked. So, you know, if you are a gambling man and you're in a position where you can lock in a small a, a lower rate at a variable and you've done the math and you're willing to gamble a little bit, then you might save a few dollars. You might get caught and the government might go, yeah, we're going up a point next year and we're going up another half point next year and we're going up another half point next year. I highly doubt it. You're probably <laughs> safe not. It'd be a bad time. You got a lot more to worry about than your mortgage rate at that point. But um, yeah. Uh, yeah, like the, for us, the, for us, for example, down. you know, we went in at five. I have, I have nearly as good a credit as you can hope to have before having a mortgage under your belt uh, in terms of like debt load under my name. Um, and they, and we're not buying super huge. We're not going super, we're not maxing our, our budgets or anything like that. And our fixed rate was like, uh, two, four, nine. 
Yeah. And uh and our variable is like one one five. And so uh one one, one five one one five. And are so you with, are you with a big bank? Through a broker. Okay. So you're you're like probably in a, like with a credit union. Like no, nope. it didn't end up going to a credit union. I uh, oh, I don't want to say I want to fucking yeah, like well, give out fine. all my shit. Yeah, but yeah, fine. 115 which is not far from what my cousin Ben got through his broker. His was a little bit uh his like 125 or 135. We got 115. Um so basically like the 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 national bank like a, for us, for our situation. That's why Jeff is like wisely saying everyone's different. Uh would have to go up pretty fucking substantially Bro, I, in I short look, order yeah. before I before before for us in our situation and we can just lock in so if it starts like creeping up and we say all right what's our lock in right here and we're getting there and it's not you know and uh, th then we can just fucking do it then but for now like the difference between that that was an enormous that's an enormous monthly cost difference between 115 and 249 so like for us it's in half. the time <laughs> It's literally half. So it's like we can, half. so we can take the money that we're saving in variable for the first, like let's say two or three years, because it's not going to creep up past two four nine in uh, for us in variable in that period, and dump that money into our principal in that period of time, and then the money that we save on interest over the life of the twenty five year mortgage is going to be way better than if we had locked 249 and uh, because of the low interest. So everyone's different, and that's the yeah. bitch about this shit. Is you got to shop around. You gotta, you gotta go to your banks. You gotta, you gotta go to brokers. You gotta read print everything. Bro, you could be getting one. We could be getting one one five, bruh. but you bruh. know they're they're they're, <laughs> bruh. I'm yeah. I have been reading yeah. like it's my job. Yeah. I've had my parents read it. I've had my lawyers read it. There is there yeah. is nothing like substantial that is going to come up. And 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 fuck us in the ass. At least not in the first five years. Which at that point, it's yeah. it's kind of whatever. That's like the first five years is where for us we're gonna try and put as much into our principal within reason as possible to get the twenty five down to maybe a twenty year in the first five, and then level ourselves out and start uh, and start putting money away for a second property. But yeah, it's it's different for everyone. Second one: broker, big four bank, or smaller banks. Go to all of them and read everything. Is yes. the answer to that. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good answer. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Like all of my mortgages are all with big banks. Um, and I have a very good relationship with them because I'm Get giving them properties, like, yeah. I'm giving them like a hundred thousand dollars a year in yeah. just interest. Um, yeah. probably significantly more now that I think about it. Um, so, you know, they treat me well, I get the best, best rates. Um, you know, but here's the thing. When I first bought my first house, I had to put 25% down and my interest rate was 5.99. It was 6%. Yeah. And it was for the first year. And then after that, it went down to, you know, three point something because the interest rates were just different back then. But yeah. I had to prove myself because we didn't have the best credit. We didn't have, you know, working as a streamer. I was new. I didn't really have much stuff. So I had to take what I could get uh, back then. But uh, Adam's right. Shop around. You have to make these phone calls because remember, you're not buying their business. They're buying your business, essentially. You know, these mortgages, these, this is how the banks make their money. This is where, this is how, this is why their buildings are bigger than all of our buildings is mortgages, 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 mortgages. You are interviewing them to see which is the most compatible for your specific needs. And it's, you have to ask around. And then when you start building a relationship with a broker or a bank directly, everything is good. Just know that your broker is getting something, right? So you want to make sure that your broker is working for you, not necessarily working for them. Obviously, they're working for themselves. It's like a real estate agent, right? Real estate agent can take you down a dark path <laughs> if, if you let them take you down that dark path. Or they but can I think be your just like friend. an insurance broker, they actually have to have cert they, they're certified where they have to act in your like fiduciary, course, they have to act in your best interest, which a real course, estate agent doesn't. It doesn't. They they don't technically have yeah. to. You know, so you know. They, well, I mean, by law, uh, but with their with their license, they're they're supposed to yeah. take care of you. They're supposed yeah. to relay all information to you, etc. But let's guys, we're talking mortgages here. This is big money. Um, you know. 
there are real estate agents making millions of dollars a year, and there's brokers making millions of dollars a year. Yeah. Um, and they, if you do not read the fine print, read the fine print, read the fine print, you could be signing something where you think you're getting an amazing deal, and they're actually bending you over fucking six ways from Sunday because you didn't read the fine print. Yeah. You know. So uh, yes, I'm with Adam on that. Ask around. There is no better than this. Depending on where you're at in the in real estate journey, whether you're an investor, your first time home buyer, whatever, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Everybody's financial situation is different. Everybody's credit situation is different. Certain people get maxed out on doors. They have to go to uh, smaller banks and 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 get in in a meeting and pitch and show the portfolio. All this stuff. So it's not as cut and dry as what people. But for most people, everyday people, they're just buying their first house. Yeah, just ask around. Uh, last one, 2025 or 30 years. That's entirely dependent on how much interest you feel like paying and how much your monthly costs you can afford because you're trading that off by and large. Because the longer the mortgage, the lower the, uh, your, your, uh, excuse me, your mortgage payments are going to be because yep. they're stretching it over a longer time. But five years in mortgage is an enormous amount of interest in terms of money. And so while it looks good up front, in the long term, you know, you could be, you know, five years in mortgage, depending on what your payment structure in, in, in your amortization schedule is like, can be fucking, you know, 40 or 50 40 grand, grand in interest. Yeah, 40, 50,000 dollars <laughs> so, easily in so, five years. Well, think uh, about it, right? If you do it, say, say you have a house and you pay it off in 25 or 30 years, you know, say you bought the house for $200,000, by the time that 30 years is over you've paid $500,000 for the house just because of interest, right? So, you know, that's what's going to fuck you. This is what I tell people. You know, once again, it's personal. So this is not financial advice. Oh, so personal, gotta, yeah. But you got to ask yourself, what am I trying to do with my property, okay? Am I trying to pay it off early? If you're trying to pay it off early, you know, you might go with a 15 year, you know, Dave Ramsey screams, get a 15 year fixed uh, and, and pay it, you know, pay it down. Yeah. Your mortgage payments are going to be bigger, which will force you to buy a lesser house so that you're not house poor. You know, it, you're in something more that you can afford. And a lot of times people will go on a 30 year or here in Canada, a 25 year because it makes their mortgage payments smaller so they can afford a bigger house. But you got to understand you're just paying more interest for me. I always max it out. I get the 25 year, but what I do is I pay down my house more every year, my personal residence. So it doesn't matter. If you want to pay your house off early, you can still get a 30 year. Just make sure that you're disciplined. You're actually paying it down Yeah. because if you're paying it down, it doesn't matter what term you pay, you, you, you have because you're paying it down fast regardless. To put it in perspective, for example, if you add a hundred and like on like on a four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollar home, if you put a hundred and fifty dollars more a month into your principal, that's it. Hundred and fifty dollars more per month in the first five years because of how interest is going to fuck you in the long term. You literally take a twenty five year mortgage to a twenty year mortgage. Yes. Five years off a hundred and fifty dollars a month for the first five years. Yes. Knocks. Yes. Even more to like knocks five years and that and which isn't much. That's that's. That's not a lot of money. No, that's a that's but a in nice, the long that's term, a nice dinner at a restaurant a month. You you literally flip that into twenty or thirty grand worth of interest deleted because yes. of doing it up front. So yeah, like it, it, like just a discipline. And the if reason is do it, is because it. interest is is through they called it monetize or mon monetization. So like all of the interest is front loaded and it yes. goes down over time as you make these payments. Yeah. So if you look at your first payment of your mortgage, the vast majority of that shit is going to interest. A small portion of it is going to principal. They and send you, you an amortization table to show you this. Yes, your amortization. Yes, sorry, your amortization. It's all front loaded. So when you pay that down, say after if you're putting that extra $150 a month on on your mortgage, you're you're literally knocking months off in chunks <laughs> yeah. as you go. This yeah. isn't like, hey, we're doing three percent interest rate. If you got a hundred thousand dollar house, that's three grand. It's not how that shit works. All that shit is going to be front loaded. The banks is making their money. Period. And there's no way you can get out of it. So I always suggest to people, 
is you want to, if you, if you're looking to pay your mortgage down early, you can still go on a 25 year, 30 year and your mortgage payments be less so that if a life event happens, you're not, you're not paying a large thing, a large mortgage payment. And, and so you might have like maybe six months where you can't do that extra bit of money, but you know, at least your mortgage payment is smaller for those periods of time. But if you're gong ho and you just want to fucking pay it down, it doesn't matter what you do. Do 15, do, you know, do 30, do whatever. Right. Um, it, it doesn't really matter, but it's an individual thing. I can't answer that question for you. Yeah, it's it's, it's all individual, individual all yes. individual, and so much of it is yeah. The best yes. advice of, yeah, of all of this. Oh yeah. Oh for snappy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you split your mortgage payments uh, biweekly, the reason why you pay it down faster is because there will be certain months where you will actually do three payments. And thus, you're paying it down a little bit faster. There's there's one or one or two, I think, extra payment terms Payments, in a year, a year. calendar Correct. year. If you yeah. do it by, it's the same with cars. Like when you yes. if you go finance a car and they give you the option, you'll they'll say, well, yeah, you're gonna pay this much, but uh, so there's more over the year, but you also get through it, you know, faster, and there's less whatever. It's the same concept yes. as you would with the house. Yeah. Um, and so, like, if you're somebody that gets paid biweekly. Sometimes that's not the worst idea. If you have the cash cool. in the bank because you're somebody getting not paid not monthly but biweekly, yep. then maybe that's a good idea for you because you can afford to do that because you're getting the money every two weeks. Yep. Um, but um, but yeah, that's probably the biggest thing is just fucking read everything. All yeah. the, the the answers to all this is read. Yeah. <laughs> like, read and and, and, and the personal. Other, the other thing is is like don't necessarily. Like talk to your family and friends, like people that bought real estate and, and been down there, pick their brain, yeah. but don't just mimic them because yeah. their situation is different than yeah. likely your situation. And in some instances, they bought a home 25 years ago and shit different. has changed dramatically it's different. since then. It's different. Yeah. yeah. So there it is. Uh, super commie movie question for you guys. Is there a specific actor or actress for you that's a deal maker or breaker when it comes to movies? So like maybe somebody that if you if they're in the movie you immediately want to watch it more or if they're in the movie you immediately want to watch it less. The Rock. More or less at this point. <laughs> oh, it's less at this point, but yeah. they're like <laughs> if it's the right role, I'm in. <laughs> but like you know, it's it's usually it's usually a, a, a make or break, you know? Like if The Rock was in the last Fast and the Furious, I would have watched it. I still haven't watched it. You know, uh, but if I see the rock in like, you know, another jungle cruise, I'm out. Yeah. Uh, man. Woody Harrelson, I've said this before. If he's in something, I tend to want to watch it. I don't know why. He's not like the greatest actor in the world, but there's something about him doing character uh, bits in certain dramatic roles that I've always uh, enjoyed. Um, I will watch almost anything with Meryl Streep in it, which was coincidentally don't look up. <laughs> so that was, that was, uh, that's another one. Um, as far as like ones that I, that they like, turn me off from seeing them. Um, I, and I can't, I can't watch a Kevin Hart film. I can't do it. I, I've tried, I've tried and I've failed many times. Uh, I can't, I can't do it. Uh, and then maybe on the, on the female side, um, man, I struggle to watch shit with Anne Hathaway in it these days. Yeah, uh, every, every time, ever since she did fucking, uh, Interstellar and just ran, and that's not even like technically her fault because that was just written in and that was her character. But unfortunately my brain is now attached that to her and now I can't stand watching Anne Hathaway stuff. Uh, but you know, there's a, there's a couple obviously like right now. Since I haven't seen Matrix Matrix Resurrections, Keanu Reeves is still prime territory for me. <laughs> Nicolas Cage, uh, for sure, as well. Some others. Uh, um, oh, for for a female, for me, Melissa yeah. McCarthy. I can't watch her. Oh, in anything. I don't, does she's does anyone does anyone believe it or not? Yes, she's like she's like Adam Fuck. Sandler at this point of Netflix. She's uh. awful. Um, but she cranks out shitty, shitty Z movies and, you know, they've got like this diehard fan base and it's just awful. 
Uh, oh, as far as, sorry, there's one other, like, a, a property-related thing. Is it bad to buy a property and pay it in full, fresh out the gate? No. The only time that I could say that maybe wouldn't be the best idea is, let's say that you were, uh, house flipping and you only had X number of, of like, uh, liquid cash, and so you were playing the game of getting the renovations done inside of a window where you're not losing money to mortgaging and shit, or sitting, in, uh, you know, on the market, and you were trying to flip it real quick, uh, I mean, and you wanted, and you needed yeah. more money for like renovation work and shit like that or whatever. And otherwise, like if it's your own personal home, no, there's never, a, in my opinion, never a bad time because you're instantly not one. You're not paying any interest. If this is your forever home and you've magically got five hundred grand sitting in an account somewhere, I would say fucking go buy a house and just and know that you're not going to be paying. 150 grand worth of interest because it's your forever home. But if you're playing like the real estate game, there are instances that I'm sure Mr. Black will be able to elaborate on even more in which sometimes not going all in yeah. is more, you can leverage that more than just buying something outright, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So if you're buying rental properties and you're buying and holding, buying them in cash is just dumb. Um, it's yeah, dumb rental because, you definitely don't yeah, need to. Yeah, because you, because you know you should be you sh you know once again this isn't financial advice. You should be uh, <laughs> you 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 should be leveraging debt um, because you know you can say for example you could buy a duplex for a um, hundred thousand dollars and you're gonna buy and hold it right. I'm just using yeah. easy numbers and you have to put twenty percent down, so that's twenty thousand bucks. And then you need you know a little bit of closing costs and whatnot. You're all in for twenty five k. Instead of taking $100,000 and buying that house, you could buy that same house four times, $25,000 for each, right? Use that yep. to leverage all four, and then cash flow every single one, have appreciation for every single one, and depreciate for every single one. You're going to make way more money because yep. you're leveraging debt. So buying it, you're going to make a lot less. Listen, somebody gave me $100,000 and I could buy a property. Um, I'm only going to take 25 K and I'm going to buy that and leverage 75 K because essentially you're taking 25,000 and you're getting a hundred thousand dollar asset. And when it appreciates in value and it goes up 10% in a year, you're making $10,000 on that asset, but you only have 25 in. So your return on investment is infinitely more. It's way more than 10% than if you were to buy it in cash and get a 10%, uh, 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 and a, a bump up because you, you can go buy other shit because you can go buy other shit. You do that four or five times. Now yeah. there does come a time when you should not continue to over leverage and you need to start pulling money out. So yes, the only time you should really buy a house in cash as an investor is if a, you can't get financing. So for whatever reason, so sometimes you got to get hard money. You got to get family and friends to give you money. And if you ran your fucking numbers, because you never take money from somebody, if you don't know what the fuck you're doing ever, and you buy something in cash, then renovate it in cash, you bypass everything. You don't have to deal with banks. You don't have to deal with all the fucking bullshit that goes along with it. It's a lot cheaper to do it that way in terms of like costs. And then you can sell it and flip it or refinance it after you've put in all the money. So if you're in for half a million, then you put another $100,000 in it on top of that. So you're in for six, you've done a great job and now it's worth 850. Now you refinance it, get it 80% LTV, loan to value. Then you pull out the vast majority of your money. Then you're getting a much better return. The only, the only time I say it's good to just buy a house outright outside of that is your personal residence. Now yeah. people are going to say, hey, I could take that money, put it in the stock market, make six to 8%. Good. Congratulations. All the power to you. All right. But I'm going to tell you guys something right now. When you pay off your house, there is a feeling like no other feeling in the world to know that you can lose your job. You own it. The bank doesn't own it. You own it. It's your place. Nobody can take that from you. As long as you pay your property tax every year, you're good. All right. Plus, that's a guaranteed return. So if your interest rate is 3%, you're guaranteed to have made 3% on your money because you're no longer paying the 3%. So then not only that, you no longer have a mortgage payment. So that mortgage payment you're doing every month, you can then stick into the stock market if you wanted to. And, and it'll snowball very quickly, right? So, you know, anybody out there, in my opinion, that is saying, oh, you know, 
you know, leverage, 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 refinance, refinance, home equity line of credit, leverage, leverage, leverage your, your personal residence and go, go. There's a time and place for it. But honestly, don't we all strive to want to own our own property and not owe anybody anything? You know, yeah, you can probably make more money. Math doesn't lie. You can make more money by investing it elsewhere if you're smart. But people seem to take money off the property and buy cars, trips, jewelry, dumb shit, and 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 they're not they're they're not doing smart smart with, by the, by their money. Pay off your house, be debt free, and then worry about all that other fucking shit. In my opinion, if you want to maximize yeah. every dollar, and you're an extremely savvy investor and not only that you're <laughs> that's the trick and you're extremely <laughs> disciplined it's all discipline and you're assuming no life no life emergencies happen at yeah. all and they will it's life people get sick you lose a job you want to change careers you're not happy a divorce happens whatever if you're assuming none of that happens and you're disciplined and investor savvy math doesn't lie paying off your home statistic or uh, from a financial standpoint is a dumb idea but seriously to make an extra three points in the stock market or wherever <laughs> you're going to throw your money is it worth the gamble seriously for like the vast majority of people the no. answer is no. Uh, the, no they hear right. a bunch of smart people that have made millions of dollars or billionaires that say never pay off your home do this they're probably trying to sell you something they, these people are on a different stratosphere. For everyday people, paying off your home is going to be the most freeing thing you'll ever do in your fucking life. It is the biggest expense of all. And making an extra three points a year is not fucking worth your peace of mind. Because when your house is paid and you don't have to worry about it, you have time. You have opportunity cost. You can change careers if you want to. You can take time off. You no longer have a mortgage payment. You can take those trips that you want to take and pay cash and not go on credit. You can enjoy your life without worrying about paying Tom and Peter. It's done. So why wouldn't you do that? I mean, if you're 22 years old, okay, maybe not. I don't know. But if you're starting to get up there, you want to have a family, you got responsibilities, pay the shit off if you've got the means. And definitely don't sit and keep it fucking liquid, sit in the bank doing nothing. At least get a guaranteed <laughs> return. At the very least, this isn't financial advice. At the very <laughs> least, get a home equity line of credit in your house. Pay off your home. And then if you need to, and it's an emergency, you can take money off, off your home and pay what you need to do. But I can almost guarantee you, if you pay your house off, ain't nobody signing up to go back into mortgage debt. Pay it off and see how it feels. I'm telling dude, you, dude, like the because like, when people with the investment thing, the the key there is that you one, you need to almost ex, almost assuredly be doing all of it yourself. You can't be paying other people to do your shit because you're going to lose money on every single fucking deal that you're doing and taking off uh, money that you're making in the market with all the money that you're trying to put in to make over top of having your home. Uh, most people, even if they have a reasonable amount of education in the market, are going to fuck that up. Very few people can successfully beat just dumping money in uh, and market averaging and hitting your like your fucking anywhere from seven to eleven, depending on how lucky you are that year percent uh, yeah. on the market. And if you're yeah. better than that, it's because it's your job. That's basically it. Your entire yeah. job is to beat the market, and you might not even do it, even if that's the case with a house. It's fuck, guaranteed man, return. It's, it's guaranteed. guaranteed. And in Canada, anyway, it's guaranteed. It's different everywhere. The average increase yearly in Canada, if you take out the last two years even, is 6% on every home across the country, average. Yeah. Listen, yeah, you can throw your money in index funds. You can throw, chuck it in an S&P 500, and you're going to make, you know, on average 6 7 maybe 8% over yeah. a decade, two decades. Congratulations, you did it. I, I'm not against that, but if somebody's asking me the question, if they have the money to pay off their home today or put it in the market, why wouldn't somebody pay off their home and then no longer have a mortgage payment and then dump all that extra money into the market, you know, and just be done in case life happens. But some people, and once again, you know, there might be guys like Miyagi and other people that, you know, are savvy and understand the game and they can do it. But most people, the vast majority, they are going to smother themselves in debt, 
and get into more consumer debt. And then they're going to be, then they're, they're never even going to be able to make extra payments on their mortgage, right? I, every year put more money on my home and I am actively working to pay off my house because when my house is paid off, I don't have to worry anymore. My family is taken care of. If this whole fucking shit goes to shit, then I go, Hey, I did it. I made it. My family's taken care of. It's done. And instead of over leveraging, and you're talking with somebody, I have millions of dollars in loans, in, in mortgages, millions with an M. All right. I am all for debt. I, I am 100%. I leverage debt and I make money off debt every single year and lots of it. Okay. But when it comes to your personal residence, my attitude is different because peace of mind is better than a dollar every day of the week for me. I can't, this is once again, it's a personal thing to everybody else. You only can answer that question. What's a popular game mechanic that you hate, Mr. Black? Uh, for example, and I, I, I agree with this example. Um, it's been, this is timely because M has been playing Breath of the Wild. Fuck when your weapons break and you have to like go and friggin repair them or pick up another weapon or you're in the middle of combat and a weapon breaks and you get to switch to another one and then that one breaks because the boss is still going you switch to another one. Fuck all that shit. I hate busy work in games. If I yeah. want busy work, I clean my house. I'm not playing your or game. Or you go buy a house and renovate it. Or buy a house it. and renovate it. Like I, I will find <laughs> ways to do like I'm, I'm in here to enjoy your combat and your fucking gameplay and your story and your characters and shit. I am not, I'm not playing your game so that I can cycle a fucking weapon menu every 45 seconds because you decided that weapons have to break that frequently. I'm not about that life. So, uh, that's definitely like very fucking high up my list. My other one that I'll mention before handing it off, uh, is that is that in the world of free-to-play games where everyone says, oh, well, this is the case because it's free, and if you paid $60, we wouldn't have to do this, which is, I fucking shut the fuck up, it's bullshit, is games forcing you to have to log in daily to not fall behind. Games that don't respect your time. Halo did this shit with the fucking winter event most recently, where uh, you had... Uh, X number of days where you had to log in every day to play one game. So very simple, but you had to log in and play a game every single day. And if you don't, after a certain period of time, you can't retroactively unlock the other levels by playing more Halo. It had to be one game a day, every fucking day. That shit drives me nuts. It's also why I dropped playing, um, Genshin Impact, because it was a second job. If you missed, like, one day, you're falling behind. You missed two days... You start getting anxiety. Three days, you're like losing hair over it. Uh, any game that has mechanics that doesn't respect my time because they're just trying to get me to uh, to log in, so maybe I spend yeah. money on the shop. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Those are my yeah. top two. Uh, ask the question again. Uh, game mechanics that uh, uh, popular game mechanics that you hate. Um, save places. <laughs> Instead of saving one. anywhere? I just should be able to save anywhere and have the convenience of turning off the game when I need to turn off the game. Um, I think, uh, you know, there's a difference between check marks and save places. Check marks totally different because it, it gives you sort of the pace of the game and they it, it almost signifies like the scene is over. You've done that section of the game. You know, now if you die or whatever, you this is where you go back. Totally fine with that. But using it as only places where you can save like little fucking, you know, like old final fantasy stuff where like you have to run to a save location. Um, unless you're in the open world, um, you should be able to save anywhere at any time. You click the start button, click save, be done with it. You know, running to a typewriter inside resident evil. I understand that, uh, it's, a, it's a tradition. Um, but it's fucking annoying. Uh, sometimes you just got to go and you want to turn it off. It's 2022 almost. We should be able to turn off the game at any point and turn it on and be right back in the same spot that we decided to turn the game off. So that shit pisses me off. That should just <laughs> not be a thing in 2022, ever. Um, and the other thing that pisses me off, bad menus. Overly complicated drop-down menus. 
Menus, well, like a lot of menus. visual shit that doesn't need to be there that like makes it harder to find what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, no, that that ain't it, right? Like when I turn on Call of Duty and there's 15,000 different options and different things and I just want to play, that shit makes <laughs> me want to turn off the game. Especially when I click on something and I'm in the wrong mode because I'm just confused. So just too many uh, like convoluted menus, whether that's a Final Fantasy where, you know, there's just too many attachments and different things that connect with different things and it's like i get it but like there's a point there's a point where confusion is not a good thing like i understand you want to take some time and make it your own and forge your own way and then there's just complicated for complicated and there's a lot of games that do complicated for complicated oh, and yeah. it, oh and battlefield it. 2042 has one of the worst menus ever made in any video game ever uh yeah. for those reasons um, the question, which one of you are esports? Holy fuck, did that, did you see that shit on Twitter? The, but uh, that, did oh, that yeah, pop up on your timeline? Yeah, I, <laughs> I am the law! I, That's yeah, all I, I could see. think of when I saw, when I read yeah. that line, I was like, what kind of fucking nonsense? Holy shit. The, the absolute fucking balls. Um... I think that my funniest part about the whole, I'm not even going to say their name, but I think the funniest part about that whole thing was how many people, because of where esports is, nobody know, nobody know who the fuck he is. Nobody, nobody, not, not only does nobody know, nobody cares. Yeah, like, I was about, <laughs> I, I was about to say that, I was about to say the nobody really cares thing. Yeah, because it like, really does. It, know, nobody like, really does. I know who he is yeah. and, you know, I got respect for him from like what he's done and stuff. Um... And I'm sure a lot of the old guards do. I get it. But, like, this isn't 2013 or 2010 anymore. It's, once again, it's, it's, it's 2022, and, and you're a dime a dozen. Like, you are, you are very replaceable. And so when you've got this, this attitude about yourself, like, I'm fucking hot shit, um, people are going to check you pretty quick because you're really not as hot as you think you are. Um, in today's standards, we're not diminishing what you've done but you don't need to let everybody know you, there's ways to do it. Right. There's just, and that was like, it is what not, it is. That's not it. I, I just read it and I was just like, Oh, whatever. I'm not even going to partake. I mean, I get it. I, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even I take part of it. I understand where he was going. I get it. But it's just like, dude, it's 2022. Just about, you got to be careful on how you say the shit you say. And it just se seemed like he didn't give a fuck. He was just saying, you know well, what? Well, uh, he this never guy. gave a fuck. That's well, part of his you know, like, and thing. He's an old, yeah, and he's an old guard. You know, it's kind of like a 90-year-old guy that's just seen shit, been through it. And it's like, you know what? He's going to tell you how he fucking feels. And, he, you know, if you want to like it, you know, like it. <laughs> I got to be, I get, can I, I, I'm going to be real here. Go ahead and be real. I'll be very fucking real here. You go ahead and be real. I don't, I don't think he was even back in the day all that important. I got to be fucking honest. <laughs> I really don't. I yeah, don't I think mean, anything like if you remove him from the equation, that would be like us going back and saying if you remove lag TV from the from the equation, like yeah, StarCraft we 2 content creation was going to implode upon itself. No, no, we <laughs> no. Listen, no, man, bro. StarCraft was going to be fine with or without us. You That's, know, we, yeah, we, that ain't. We had our own little thing, and it's so great. to say. So to say, not just his niche yeah. from back in the day, but to say yeah. East. Okay. Esports yeah, okay, was okay. so insane. Holy shit. No, no. Stop. Okay. Uh, Danjiv, we moved on now. Danjiv, do well. What's your top? We got to make this quick because uh, M's charge nurse. So I got to get her in early. What's your top three PS4 games? Um, oh my fuck. Uh, top three PS4 games Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, oh, fuck, man. I. Mm. Hey, dude, I don't have them. Bloodborne. Yeah. Number Horizon one. Zero Dawn, Bloodborne, and uh, I guess uh, whether you like it or not, The Last of Us. Yeah, Bloodborne, The Last of Us. Which was technically, was that, tech, was that, was, The Last of Us technically PS3? They it got re-released on the PS4? It was. And it's I still... played it on the PS3, I do believe. Maybe I didn't. Uh, well, yeah, let's, let's say, God, I'd rather, I'd rather put God of War on that list for PS4. 
So let's yeah. get real. Last of Us, because that was PS3. I, for, I sometimes I I forget Last it was PS3. Too, so I mean, you know, I didn't beat it, but yeah. I'll still put it up there because, like, I don't play console. But Bloodborne for sure. Bloodborne, Horizon Zero Dawn, and God of War. I think I'm okay with that. There you go. I can't even give it. you three. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this week uh, of uh, of Technical Alpha. We will be back uh, theoretically next week. <laughs> for more hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys all had a great holiday whatever you were celebrating whether you're celebrating not celebrating or celebrating multiple things uh stay safe out there you know what everyone's gonna come in contact with this fucking stupid ass virus now so just you know take care of yourself at this point you gotta treat it like anything just to make sure that your immune system's ready yep that's it i've been cranking vitamin d and shit it's happening because it's, 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 it's happening it's gonna happen so just take care of yourself, Godspeed, and don't watch The Matrix 4, maybe. No, we'll do see. it. You can shit on it with us next week. <laughs> yeah, that, that's also a possibility. We'll, so, see yeah. guys. we'll see you guys next week. Peace! Peace!